Hello and welcome back to Live Drawing with Octopolis. It's Thursday night, Treasures with Brian Miller and Dr. Christy Miller, who's joining Yay. us once again. And tonight we are going to be talking all about our adventures in Scotland. Yay! So you guys left us know we changed the audio setup. Uh, it's, it's completely new from last week. So let us know how the audio sounds. Make sure that I sound, you can hear me and hear Christy this week. That's the plan at least. We'll see. <laughs> but yes, we're gonna be talking all about our adventures in Scotland. Uh, it wouldn't be though a trip to Scotland without some scotch. So I've poured a wee dram. <laughs> you can count on him. My first beverage tonight is the Balvenie 14. So that's the first the first scotch of the night here. I'll put it on the big cam too so you can see. Balvenie, 14 year old Caribbean cask. So that's the first wee dram of the night. I hope you're enjoying whatever fine beverage you have, whether it's from Scotland or not. Yeah, I don't like scotch, so I'm back to Sauv Blanc. But Cheers guys. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's tasty. Tasty, tasty stuff. So, the, probably the first question is, why did we go to oh, Scotland? He's having Glenfiddich. Oh, I see uh, Chow Time says we're having Glenfiddich. Nice. We'll get to there. Uh, Randy says she's going to continue with the tiki drinks. First of all, wow, look at this turnout. we got to say thank you to everybody on the, that's on the chat right now. I see Monique, and I see Bex, and... Tracy. I see Tracy, and I see Let's Do This, and I see... Tomcat, and I thought for sure that earlier I saw Retro on here. Oh, there's Retro Shinobi, um, and Randy and Chow. So good to see all of you guys. Thanks for coming back for another Thursday Night Treasures. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about why we went to Scotland in the first place. Because it's pretty. Well, because it's pretty, but we were... Because it's really cold? No, that's not why we went. <laughs> that's I, not I don't why like we that went? part at all. Because... Um, my family's, uh, made, my mother's maiden name was McNaughton. Maybe. Because <laughs> we were actually in England for Star Wars Celebration Europe. Ding, 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 oh, ding. okay. That was it. Yes. I remember now. So we um, had to go to England for Star Wars Celebration Europe. And I don't know, we got a wild hair that hmm. we were like... I think We've got four days. Why not? Yeah, I think at first we were like, oh, we should stay late. And then we realized that we had to fly from Celebration back home uh, in like the next day, be at San, San Diego, Diego. Comic-Con. So we said, maybe we build in a day or two beforehand. <laughs> so that was our motivation for sure. Hey, they want to know where your Glen Karen is. Oh, where is my... Um, and Claire and it's another distillery. Oh, the glass. I, I, did I bring it in here? I don't um, think you did. Hold on. I thought I did. I thought I did. Oh, is it? There it is. There you go, guys. A little fiddly to drink out of during the stream because it's like up my nose the whole time. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a Balvini Glencairn glass we got. So we do, I do have it, but tonight I'm just using the, the plain old scotch glass. That way in case he spills it off the desk and it cracks, it won't be the, a tragedy. Um, <laughs> So, we decided to go to Scotland on this whim um, before celebration. And here's the thing you don't think about, is that when you go to, you know, Comic-Cons, as, as some of you know, you have a lot of crap, right? You have to take a lot of crap. Well, when you fly to a Comic-Con, you really have to take a lot of crap. And so, we ended up having to have these giant suitcases full of art supplies that we had to take around. And so we're like, oh, it's, it's England. We've been here before. We're going to get ourselves a, an adorable, cute little car. And it will be great. And we'll rent something cute and fun. And how great will that be? Yeah. And then we had giant suitcases. So then we became the typical Americans and had to get like a big car. But still is not a big car comparatively. But it felt huge. And um, I just posted up a, car, a picture of it here. Yeah, it was second, a but. Peugeot 206 diesel wagon thing and it was like manual shift so it was super fun for me yeah and i made brian drive the entire time uh there it is how cute is that <laughs> um i uh I, I obviously know how to drive a stick but i do not like driving in england i have done it many times and so whenever brian's there i'm like i'll be happy to navigate before he can say anything and therefore he has to drive i thought that worked out great on my part <laughs> um chow tyson says how's driving on the other side of the road yeah brian how is that 
Um, you know, it's not too bad. The first time we went to England and I did it, um, we actually rented the car in London proper, like downtown London. Bad idea. And we were supposed to get a Mini Cooper and they took one look at us and they're like, ah, fat Americans, um, here's the keys to your um, Saab. But it was mm -hmm. when Saab was part of GM. So it was essentially like the size of a Cadillac. And so here we are in the narrow streets of London trying to drive this Saab around and not even like one block away from the rental car place. Smack! <laughs> mirror to mirror as I'm going down the okay, street. The real story is we're driving through London and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit babe, babe, oh my god, wait, stop, we're, you're gonna hit it. He's like, it's fine. Smack! I'm like, not fine, told you, but whatever. So, yeah, knocked the mirror on the car. So that was our first trip to London. So this trip, uh, we said, okay, we're not actually renting the car in London, we're renting the car at Heathrow and driving north into Scotland. Still so. not great getting out of Heathrow, but. So not too bad being on the wrong side of the road. I just think it's a little more mental taxing. So, you know, we had to do seven hours to get to seven. Glasgow. And that was after flying overnight and being awake most of the time. So uh, Tomcat's talking about roundabouts. Yeah, we, <laughs> I love roundabouts. Actually, m one of my stories is that the first time I was ever in England, I was like 21 years old. And um, I was coming back from a dig. And three of us were there. And we wanted to rent a car to go look around England before we went back to the States. And you had to be 25 to rent the car. Well, I was 21. The girl with me was 20. And we were with this guy who was 25. So we were like, perfect. He can rent it. Well, he couldn't drive a stick. So I had to drive, but we had to get him into the parking lot. And then we had this like big to-do about where's the stuff and how do we do this and where are we going to go. And so finally they left us alone and I jumped in the passenger seat and drove us out. And on the way back to turn in the rental car, we're at a roundabout and it's crazy London traffic because we also rented it in London, of course, like idiots. And it's crazy, crazy traffic. And um, I start to go and I can't make it because a lorry cuts me off, a big truck cuts me off. And so um, I had to stop. Well, the woman behind me never looked to see if I actually went or not. And she plowed into the back of me. And so I put all the kid that was 25's information down on the sheet and had told that to the cops. <laughs> and uh, was like, okay, good luck with that, bye-bye. <laughs> and went back to the States. <laughs> But, but yeah, as far as driving on the wrong side of the road, <clears throat> as long as you're not doing it in London proper, it's not that big of a deal. It just takes a little bit more focus. Um, the only other problem I had, I mean, not a problem, obviously the stick shift, instead of being to my right, was to my left, so that was interesting. But the gear change pattern was the same, so it's like, uh, you know, first gear was like Up, where it should down. be, but yeah. it's really far away. Um, yeah. So that part was okay. Um, but... What I didn't know was the way that they do their service stations, their rest stops off the highway. So like in America, we don't really have it like they do. Ours are sort of like little towns and stuff and you pull off and get gas. Like an exit ramp. On theirs, it's an exit ramp, but there's no town, it's just the services. So it's like a gas station and maybe fast food and maybe a bathroom. Well, we're kind of, Christy and I have our, our, our normal driving habit. And so we pull off, I fill up the gas tank, she goes to the bathroom. Well, what we discovered on our first one of these was that once you're at the gas station part... You're done. That's it. Bye-bye. It's one way back onto the highway. You can't back up. You can't go to where the I bathroom could not and it the was food serious. stuff is. So I might have had to go like the wrong way, down a one way, and had British people yelling at me and stuff. And You're was, like, sorry. It was very entertaining. Um, oh, he says he's not going to drive with us. Huh. And then Bex is like, it's super fun to drive with them. That's right. Bex Poor Bex. <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole other story, Bex. Um, yeah. In two weeks, no, next week. Next week. Next week, we'll start telling those stories, Bex. Yeah, you'll be invited. You'll be on those stories, Bex. Lucky you. And Monique says the friends that she rode with in England totally terrified her. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a reason. It's crazy over there. Um, and, you know, Brian's talking about the flight. Well, we always fly um, overnight. I plan it so that we leave the States. Um, we leave the East Coast of the States at like, you know, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. So by the time you get up in the air and they give you some food, then you can pass out and then you wake up and then you get there the next morning and you have that whole day so you didn't lose any time. But the problem with going to England is, is it's not that long of a flight. So by the time they get you all the crap and they finally turn off the lights, you only get about four or five hours of sleep. And, then, and that's if you're lucky and the kid's not kicking your seat the whole time. And then you get there, and we immediately get off the plane and go straight to the rental car. And I'm like, okay, Brian, chop, chop, seven hours, let's go. <laughs> so Brian had to go straight and start driving all the way to Scotland, which was highly entertaining for me, but not nearly as good uh, for him. That reminds me, um, I put in this thing, I'll post it up in the chat real quick, um, this 
uh, lonely plan. Uh, it's not lonely planet. It's DK. Do you ever use the DK um, eyewitness books for travel? I totally love these things. And so I like buried my head in this DK thing. And I know a lot about Scotland anyway from the things I teach and all that kind of junk. But the travel parts, you know, I wanted to make sure we didn't miss. And so I just posted a link up in the, um, um, yeah, the sun rising over Ireland when you're on the plane. Monique said, yeah, that's exactly that kind of thing. That's why I like to come in in the morning. But anyway, this book is just FYI if you're interested. I love the DK books for travel because they have lots of pictures. And so you can actually see. And they continually update them. So I think this one's like 2000 and. 18 or 19 it's pretty recent so it stays on top of like um travel advisories and this place is now closed don't go there okay well maybe with covid it may not be so updated but you get my idea um but yeah so we drove the seven hours so the point was is of that little story is that we drove the seven hours but our we were trying to only stay in castles i decided that it's going to be great to only stay in castles the entire time the entire time being three nights. So, <laughs> who, who decided this? Whose idea was this? I'm pretty sure it was mine. Oh, okay. I, I think it was mine. Actually, I think I found one online, and I was like, "Oh, wouldn't it be cool?" And Brian's like, "Let's stay at castles every night." And I'm like, "That's a great idea." And so then, I booked castles every night. <laughs> um, this picture that I just stick up here. Anybody know the shortbread company Walker Shortbread? They make the little shapes mm. of of shortbread. We drove by, and I'm like, "Slow down! Slow down! Slow down!" I love Walker Shortbread, and there they are, just like on the side of the road on their way to Scotland. But anyway, so um, the first night that we got to um, drive all the way to Glasgow, so we went all the way straight up to Glasgow, and we stayed at this place called Sherbrooke Castle. And so if you look, I have this very foreboding picture. Oh, it's huge. Hold on. Let me shrink that down so you can actually see it. Um, I was like, all I see is gray. Yeah, sorry. It was a giant photo. I didn't realize that. But it looks like very, you know, beautiful and the clouds were all perfect and stuff. It'll come up here in just a second. And um, I was like, oh, this is gonna be incredibly cool. And um, it is literally right off the highway. I mean, you are in Glasgow and then <laughs> bam, castle. And it's not ginormous of a castle, but it's still super cool. Oh yeah. And um, but they definitely, I mean, it was there before the city. Oh yeah. And it's still oh, well, there. It was there like 300 years. Well, okay, Glasgow's been there quite a lot. Wow, but before the modern city, and the, like you know, it's essentially like um, I know some of you are from Phoenix or have been to Phoenix before. It's like coming off the 101, and you look over your shoulder on the 101, and there is a giant castle. You're like, oh hey, let's stay there. Um, <laughs> So anyway, it's this really cool place, and they have this lovely little brochure that we got, and so it's got all these pictures, and um, so the best part was, is Brian drove these seven hours, and his first goal was to walk into the pub. And speaking of walking into the pub, mm -hmm. um, Chow Time has redeemed a hydrate and a Christy hydrate, so oh, we can't ignore those. Excellent. Well, I was just having a drink anyway, but I'll have another one. So, cheers, cheers. to you, Chow. Mm. Good stuff. And we have to remember that um, <laughs> Tomcat, when you showed the picture of the castle, said, Hogwarts! <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And Monique says, Christy is my spirit animal. And Tracy says, same. <laughs> and then uh, Chow says, that castle is probably older than the U.S. This castle actually is. Yes. And Monique said, um, I didn't get to Scotland, but I will try, or I, I will, and I want all castles too. And I have a thing for turrets. turrets. Yes. Yeah, and the, and the crazy thing is, at least when we went, it didn't cost any more than to stay at like a pub or not to stay at, at like, you know, some Western hotel. It was not expensive at all. No, you could stay at the, essentially the Holiday Inn. And if you paid $20 more a night, you could stay in a castle. And I was like, well, have my $20 because this is the coolest shit I've ever seen. Child Times says, talk about a glow up. What, did I look, did I look like a baby only three or four years ago? Or? <laughs> <laughs> it was like four years ago, I think, but... Um, so we get there and the first thing Brian does is like, you know, obviously there's no elevators and stuff. You got to schlep your stuff and we were on like the third floor or something. And so he, I make of him, of course, carry our luggage upstairs and he drops the luggage. He's like, we're finding the pub. And I was like, it's conveniently downstairs. So we walk back downstairs and the first thing he does is get a wee dram. And, um, what did you get the first time? Do you know? Uh, something good, like a log of woolen or a, or a Balvenie or something. Now let me tell you. <laughs> Here he goes. Chow Time says priorities. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, in America, let's just say something like a 21-year-old Balvenie. You could go out and you could pay upwards of $30 for one shot of that. When you're actually in Scotland, it's like three euros, maybe. So five bucks, less yeah, than five I mean, bucks now. It was, it was amazing. Um, the other thing I noticed in the pubs there, at least in Scotland, 
was that they usually just have one um, bartender and maybe one server. So you do not leave your empty glassware on the table. Oh, no. When you're done with your drink, you carry it back up to the bar and you set it on the bar. That's all over England, but Brian's only been to England a couple of times. Well, I've only been but... to London, and usually it's more well, Western. Well, it depends on yeah. yeah, it's more Western in the city. But all over Scotland, it was definitely like that. Like, you cleaned up after yourself, and you took them the empty glasses. And it wasn't a... It, that wasn't you being nice. That was how it was done. Monique, slap the cereal sticker. Woo! Cheers. Thank you, Monique. Um, yeah, so this place too so i was talking about that's 20 bucks more than the holiday inn this one if i you can't probably can't see very well but this one right here this was our bed <laughs> you know holiday inn versus this so yeah i'm thinking it's well worth the 20 dollars um but yeah you were talking about turrets so uh scotland you know very particular kind of gothic architecture so they are very squared off but they do most of them have turrets of some form um, the famous one, obviously, is for Robert the Bruce, and it says at the top of the Abbey, Bruce, all the way around on four sides um, in the 1500s, and Robert the Bruce took over as in his crown king of Scotland. And so that Abbey still stands um, near Stirling. And uh, you look up and you see, uh, it looks like the one I posted on the screen, but it's actually not a hotel, obviously. It's an abbey. It's a church. And it says Bruce on four sides to represent Robert the Bruce. And it still stands there from the 1500s. That's pretty cool. Um, Chow says, the prices are different than a Guinness in Ireland. A Guinness in Ireland is about the same price, at least in Dublin. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Um, and Monique was like, you're showing the picture. She's like, lol, it's under the sticker. <laughs> And Tomcat's like, Holiday Inn might have an elevator, though. Well, they would. That's a good point. But I have Brian. I don't know. In the UK, maybe not, though. That's true. But again, I have Brian, so who needs an elevator? That's right. And the giant art, we typically left it in the car and covered uh. it with a blanket because we couldn't lift the suitcase. Yeah, because, you know, we say suitcase, but the truth is the only reason it's a suitcase Huge. is because they charge more for, like, roadie gear bags and stuff. It is ginormous. So, I think it to get weighed, like... 75 or 80 pounds. Oh, it weighed more than that because yeah. they made you uh, pay extra. Yeah. So Brian's favorite thing of the trip to Scotland, you're going to see a gray screen for a second. Sorry, let me load this back up. Um, is Brian's favorite part and the whole thing he wanted to do more than anything else in the world as soon as we said we're going to Scotland is visit his favorite distillery, mm. mm -hmm. which is Balvaney. They were closed. <laughs> yeah, we knew. I mean, they, they we I had communicated with them, and they're like, "Oh, that we're actually closed for two weeks during because like apparently July is their off season because who would want to go to Scotland when it's so hot when it's sixty or sixty five degrees? Okay, we were there. Oh my gosh! One of the days that we were there was the highest that it had been all summer, and I kid you not, it was sixty eight degrees. I had on a sweater, which you'll see me in pictures, sweaters and gloves. It was 68 degrees, and people running around in shorts and playing in the water. I'm like, no. More than that, we saw people that basically stripped off all their clothes except for their underwear and were laying on the side of the road just like, oh, it's having so like, hot. And like having a little picnic on the side of the road because <laughs> they couldn't take it because it was so hot. And I'm like, no, mm -mm, we can't live here. But yes, Bal poor Bal Balvaney was closed. It was the closest we could get is the this picture. Is, this photo is as Christy close as we showing. got. Sad story. But so speaking of Balvaney, I guess I should um, move on. move on. Come on now. So what we did get to go you, to... Where's, where's the hydrates now? <laughs> you just drink. It's fine. <laughs> Cries in Arizonian. Yeah. Tracy's making fun of me being cold. If it's below 80, I'm not going. Let's just face it. Monique redeemed a Christie Hydrate. Oh, thank you. So the second we dram tonight is going to be the Abalor 16. Uh, now, the Abalor <laughs> Abunda is my absolute favorite, but it's kind of hard to find. So this is the Abalor 16. Uh, Abalor is very spirit forward, so it's really good on like a cold night. Which we have all the time here in Arizona. Uh, it's 118 today, so no. But <laughs> um, it's spirit forward, so it will keep you warm on that cool night, or it will get you effed up on a hot night. So <laughs> We'll way. see how this goes. Speaking of that, if any of you were on Tiki Tuesday, um, when was that? What is today? It was Tuesday. Two days ago. <laughs> I can't remember what today is. Um, I got a text. I won't name any names, but I got a text while I was playing tennis. Um, has Brian been overserved? <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. Because <laughs> I wasn't here. I was playing tennis. But it was okay. I came home. He was fine. Uh, Farley Crate saw the, the bottle of Abalor and she said, ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it does. It is. Good to see you on here, Farley. Let's do this as like 118. Yeah, when I started the stream earlier today, it was 118.5, <laughs> which was insane. <laughs> 
we got a snitch among us. I will. I just said I wouldn't name any names. I'm not going to call anybody out of who tattled on Brian. And the silly thing is, I was having the the what the suffering bastards. Those yeah. were like not anywhere near as strong as what you guys had me drinking. Yeah, the week I before, have to say so. that a couple of weeks ago I came from tennis and he would he was giggling. So he was way overserved more a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, they made me drink like three of the blue Hawaiians, maybe four. Ooh, I, love I don't the blue even Hawaiians. remember. Yeah, those mm. blue Hawaiians are so good. You don't even know how many of those are drinking. That's true. They are very tasty. So, also, we visited, and Brian got this little pack of Balvenie. They actually sold this at Glenfiddich, um, conveniently. And so, he got this little um, pack for he, him to bring home that he still hasn't opened. He's a, he doesn't want to give that's them That's an in-case-of-emergency yeah, pack. Yeah, that's in-case-of-emergency that crack open. Um, so, uh, Monique says, when I get my new house with the bar, I'll have to... Sh you <laughs> I will have to have y'all shoot me a list of what to stock it with. Oh, yeah. You can know, count on us. I don't know if you guys can, you can see. Can you see Indio? Wait. Hold on. There she is. She just jumped yeah, on the back of my chair. you can really see her head over top of his <laughs> shoulder. The cat has now joined the <laughs> chat. Right. Um, uh, Tomcat says, uh, was, oh, no, Marie. How do you that? Marie. Marianne. Oh, Marianne Tometz. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Uh, says, Tomcat was gifted Grange Stone 18 years, but we haven't tried it. Is it any good? I've had some of the Grange Stone. Um, they're they're all right. They're like um, they're they're a little on the um, woody side. Like you can taste the barrel, but I think an eighteen would be pretty good. So taste I think you'll enjoy barrel. it. Well, you get the you get the oak. Whatever. Or if it's a sherry cask, you get the sweetness of the sherry. But they're good. Um, I feel like I need to bottle buy a bottle of Balvenie. Yeah. Les Dudas is talking about when I had the Blue Hawaiians, and he's like, "We said four, four, four." <laughs> Uh, Chow says, I feel like I need to buy a bottle of Balvenie now. Yes, you do. But here's the deal. Skip the Balvenie 15. You might as well just drink Woodford Reserve for like one third of the price. So if you're going to get a Balvenie, you either have to pony up for the 21-year-old, which is awesome. Or you do the double cast uh, 16 that I was showing earlier, which is like half the price, but like 80% is good. So, But skip the 15 because if you've had Woodford, you'll be like... Why did I pay so much for this? It tastes like Woodford. But the rest of them are awesome. He is um, an expert. Uh, Monique says, Marie Antiometz, I think. An Antiometz. It's pronounced Sean. That's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, Perfect. thank you for your help. Thank you, Tracy. That's so much easier. That reminds me, uh, time out, side note, Sean, uh, as a... As a Student, you're going to have a little extra assignment that I'm going to talk to you about later. No pressure, but we'll get to that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Brian and I need some help with something. Is that assignment slapping stickers to start the sticker you're party the, tonight? <laughs> you're the perfect candidate. It is nothing to do with what we're talking about now, no. but it might I just tie want in you to know, Sean. It might tie into next week's episode. <laughs> Intrigue. Exactly. It might tie into next week's episode. Okay. Uh, Tracy says, I'm here for you. I know, Tracy. I can count on you for everything. This is an and and oh. someone else. Bex has redeemed to learn Arabic with Dr. Christie. Oh. So, Bex, you get to learn one word or phrase. Like you don't Arabic. already know it. Um, you have to really do you, do you need a minute to dig deep? I do. Let me think for a second. Something that Bex doesn't already know. Maybe um, a curse word? Well, or, you know tease, don't you, Bex? Don't you know what tease means? Um, she knows what Christmas unicorn means. I can tell you that much. That's not what we're talking about. Um, tease. If you say you tease, it is your butt. So the tease, if you call some, if you're talking about it, your tease, your tease is your butt. And actually, um, the word uh, zucchini, if you pronounce it zucchini, zucchini means to push. So that's easy to remember. Zucchini. Zucchini. So there's two for your price there, Bex, that you may not already know. You might have already known teas. Um, let's see. <laughs> the Team Christmas Unicorn. Yeah, we should get that, except for I left it in a lawn, or I would have brought that and shown it to everybody. I had the slipper somewhere, but... I think they're in the closet. Um, yes, you knew the teas. I thought you did know that one, but Zucchini. You can use Zucchini to push, push in. <laughs> Tomcat says, I thought today it would be Learn Scottish. Yeah, okay, so you say that, and I'm going to post something up in the link. Because have you ever tried to learn Scottish? Holy crap! There's only uh, 17 letters in the in the Gaelic alphabet. Did you know that? So that's not nearly enough for those of us that don't know anything. A oh. posture check. Thank you, let's do this. I needed that posture check. I'm all hunched over this drawing. I'm typing. Hold on. Learn and pronounce Scot Gaelic, not Scottish. Different Gaelic. I will say that like. 
no one's accent really was too strong. Oh, no, the dude at Dunnan's. Well, I was going to say, there was only one person, this old caretaker guy. No idea what he's talking about. That his accent was so thick... Because he was, it was like the hillbilly of Scotland, you know. But, but it's it's not it's not hill, hillbilly. It's Highland. It's way north. He was from way north, and yeah. I had no idea. And I'm really good. Christy, Ryan usually sits there and looks at me and yeah. like, "What is people talking about?" Yeah, Christy's really good at understanding every language, every dialect. She hears language like music. She can just just, just decipher it. But not this. Yeah. <laughs> I had but, no idea. But, what but I will say, about. everyone else we dealt with, I was surprised how easy the it was. The highbilly. I like that. Yes, the highbilly. The highbilly. Exactly that was it. Oh, Uh-oh. Farley had Hydrate. hydrate. We can do that. Cheers to you guys. Enjoy your wee dram of whatever it is you're drinking. And get this for you. I got a Christie one too. I did mine. Look at the great the great color on this. Look at that. Oh. Like <laughs> He's so <angry>. excited. <laughs> Speaking of that, I... Um, mm. Now, one of those tasting glasses on the photo is what I'm drinking right now. There you go. And this is the taste that everybody got. If everybody's ever done wine tasting or been to Kentucky and done the bourbon tastings or whatever, you know, you usually get like four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You got seven. And, I think the middle one's water. Oh, okay, you got six. Uh, but the. Do you hear that? Who is who, that? Who slapped the sticker? Who played music? Oh, it was, Slow it was Traveler. Monique. Slow there Traveler. You go. Good job, Monique. <laughs> I was like, wait, I hear that. <laughs> um, anyway, so the six little tastings, well, I don't really like whiskey. So I'd be like, mm, barely taste it and hand it to Brian. So Brian had like 12 tastings to my. Two, I was definitely half. overserved at that distillery, especially yeah. because the the three on the left are like okay. I mean, like they're normal scotches. The three on the right are like you get into like the proof plus and the double proof and stuff. And you know, times like, bro, I'd be gone. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um, the what's it called? The not white white dog. Is yeah, white they dog? call it white dog in America. Whatever yeah. it's called there, they call it something different. White something, and it is just the stuff before it's ever been. Um, well, it's distilled, but it hasn't been aged. Aged, that's the word. So it's it just the clear aged. alcohol right out of the still. Holy crap, that shit will light you up. I mean, oh, if yeah. you've ever seen the white dog at any of the bourbon stuff, you know, you just smell it. And it's like moonshine, kind of. And um, now that I know about. But anyway, um, I was just like, this is ridiculous. Forget it. Um, there's Brian. Uh, here in a second will be Brian taking a picture of himself. What you we also did not realize at the time is that um, Abelor is owned by Chivas now. Yeah, they are now. Yeah, they got bought out by Chivas. Yeah, I think we saw that Chivas has bought Abelor and Glenn Levitt, and who, someone else owns Balvaney and Glenn Fittich yeah. across the street. They're literally across the street from each other. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Chow Time says, are there American-themed restaurants in Scotland? I would say hell no. But there, There's there, McDonald's. There is fast food. Yeah, yeah. there is fast food. Um, but there's not American-themed restaurants. Mm-hmm. Most of the little towns... So here, here's, here's part of this thing about the distilleries. Like, there were... Four distilleries, or five, within say like a one mile range, where, where right where Abelor was, and we thought, oh, we can easily do three or four of those. Oh no! Oh no! No no! You 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 will get one tour before lunch and one tour after lunch, and everything closed down at four. So at four p.m., it doesn't matter if you've got a thousand dollars in your pocket. They're like, oh no, it's time to go home. Our people are going to go and be with their families and have dinner and stuff, and we're going to pull on the sidewalks and close down. They're the, like, the but town. we're ready to drink. <laughs> They're like, go back to your pub, hotel. your pub or your hotel. That's your the, local. O- the only two things that are open. Everything else closes down at four. Um, but so you 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 have to have more time than you think. And even if we were looking at a distillery that was like ten miles away, that might take half an hour to forty five minutes to get to because the roads are super tiny and narrow and twisting and over the mountains and if you get stuck behind one car you're done so it was really really cool but you know we we were up there for a few days and we could have spent weeks up oh, there God, to, yeah. to see except everything. for you would have freeze, frozen to death we needed more clothes but um tracy said that no one wants to eat like americans do true that's true um and does that include bars um they uh the there's not bars like you think like nightclubs in uh there is in edinburgh 
and there is in Glasgow, but that's really right. about Aberdeen, probably. Too. But like where these distilleries are, mm-hmm. are like tiny, tiny, tiny little towns. Tiny little towns, yeah. and they it is your it's the local. So wherever the locals are drinking their local pub, that's where you could go, or the hotels. Every right. hotel and the castles. That and even the local bars. pubs, we noticed the dining rooms were usually closed yeah. around four. It's, it's it they they actually majorly stay open till six, but you're not eating yeah. after six. Yeah, they would have the... So when you walk into a pub in the UK, you kind of go right or left, and one side is like the bar, and the other side is the part where they serve food and drinks. And a lot of times they would be like, oh, no, we're done serving food. Um, one of the funniest things was at lunchtime, we went to a, a really fun little pub. Oh, yeah. And I said, oh, my gosh, all I hear about is the Scottish salmon, the Scottish salmon, the Scottish salmon. That's I have to have it. And she says... Oh, well, we don't serve it anymore. And I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, oh, well, you can fish it right out of that river across the street. The Firth. She said, but we can't serve it because it has to be packed in ice, put on a train, shipped to London, where their version of, like, the USDA grades it. Then it can come back to Scotland. Then they can serve it. She goes, so we just don't bother. The locals catch and eat their own, but we don't bother. You can't serve it in a restaurant. You because can't serve it real, real. I mean, they do, but it's Such only, a hassle. Yeah. But yeah, so and it could, takes like two weeks to do that. So yeah. you could get your Scottish salmon in, in London easier than you could in Scotland, which was kind of funny. Now, Monique says, uh, I'm a lightweight, so one shot of anything and I'd be ready for a nap. Uh, Tomcat reminds us that, yes, they do have McDonald's. I already read some of those. Uh, and uh, The day drinking. Oh, the, the day The pubs actually do stay up quite late. Um, Until 11, I think. Well, yeah, it depends. But yeah, um, if they are um, in one of the bigger cities, they'll stay open until like midnight and then they have a last call. But the smaller local ones, it'll be 9 or 11. Um, and then you're supposed to go home and drink with your family like normal people. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, too, this place, um, The oh, Monique says that the legal drinking age in the U.K. was 18 when I went. I took my daughter, who just turned 18, so we stayed drunk for the entire month. Yes, Woo! it is still 18, but actually you can drink younger than that, and nobody would ever question it, especially if you're with your parents. They don't care if you drink or not. Um, Early on, you know, it was safer to drink beer and wine than it was ever safe to drink water. And so they would just uh, water it down with different things or they would thin it out. And so kids would drink wine and beer with their meals as well, just like and mead, just like uh, their parents would, just different levels of it. And women um, allegedly would drink watered down versions of whiskey and beer and wine and mead. And there's lots of things saying that women did not water it down but that they were supposed to. <laughs> um, anyway, I was going to say... Um, I, uh, this Abelor thing, the other thing I was going to say before we go leave this is that, um, so this guy, it says 1879 on these barrels, this guy that founded it, Mr. Abelor, I don't know, but, um, he essentially built the whole town because when they decided they started this distillery, there was nothing here. And so he employed all the people. It's kind of like the gold rush or something here in the Amer- in America. Um, so he built this facility, he hired the locals and then the locals needed, um, like a hospital so he built the hospital and they needed a school so he built the school and then the town got bigger so they needed a bridge and he built the bridge so he literally built this town around this factory that everybody worked in and now people either work in this place or one of the other distilleries or they work in the tourism industry like pubs and stuff and those other distilleries could not have existed without all the work that he put in right he um he's the one that um kind of had this idea in this area. If you don't know whiskey, there are different areas and different areas produce different kinds. And so this one little area, it's like being in Kentucky, you know, you have these little conglomerate of a bunch of them in one place and then you drive, you know, 45 minutes and there's another little bunch of them. So Avalor is in the space side right. area along with Balvenie and some of the others that we talked about. Oh, here comes a cute little picture of Brian in a second. Monique says she drank in the States, which wasn't legal. So she liked being able to openly carry into McDonald's and take photos with Bobby's with her drink in hand and post on social media. Yeah, exactly. Cheers. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. There we are at Evalor. I can see. How cute is he? He looks very pleased with himself. This is probably after his 12 drinks. Yeah, probably. I was very pleased. I was like, I'll have another round of Mm -hmm. Evalor's please. I thought I had a picture of the, um, there they are. It's going to flip through some stuff, but then it's going to end up on these um, big barrel-looking things, and they're not really barrels. They're like stays. Um, what do you call that in English? Mm. I don't know. The, they're like these wooden... Oh, um, yeah. It's where they store the corn, the mash or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And these things have, were built originally in 1879, and they're still using them, and they're the only ones like this, um, they said, uh, of any of the distilleries, because they all have lost theirs and gone to more like modern things like concrete and stuff like that. But they... This helps, they feel, uh, 
produce this, the taste and flavor. And so they still use them. And so like um, the guy said that every hundred years they go in and drain them and fix them and, you know, repair them, but they keep them as they are. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty impressive. What do we do every hundred years? Um, nothing. <laughs> silo. Yes, it is kind of a silo. You're right. Um, uh, it's not, I can't think of what they're really called, but in this case it is, it's just not hollow. They're, they're, there's space between all the boards all the way around so right. air can come and go in and I don't know what that's called. Um, fermenter, yeah, that's the word. They're these fancy whiskey words. Um, I was going to say too that we did go to um, Glen Fittich. Um, the. Um, Do you have any pictures of the have, super? Here's price. Glen Levitt. Oh, okay. There's two. We got a little Glen Levitt. Oh, oh hey, I have a super bottle. Thank you for the follow, McShawn. Thank you so much. We did find um, these two interesting. Oops, that's not it. Hold, hold, please. Um, my. Brian and I reset our stuff, and my photos go all crazy now. Um, but this is going to resin in just a second. This was actually at the Glen Fittich Distillery. Um, we could only go through the showroom, purchase, show, buy stuff here kind of thing, shop. And um, But we saw this. 19,000 pounds. 19,000 pounds for a bottle of 1968 Balvenie. Can you believe it? We did not buy it. Just FYI, in case you were wondering. Mm -hmm. um, Kettle One still uses the originals. Yeah, from hundreds of years ago, too. Yep. Um, <laughs> Looks like McShawn changed his name. Tracy's like ripped to Antonio Metz. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You can pronounce it. That's funny. <laughs> Very helpful. You can always count on Tracy to be helpful. <laughs> Here's another one that was um, a much cheaper. This one was only uh, 3,100 pounds when it comes in. Oh, only. Well, I'll yeah. take two then. It's, it's not nearly as special, but again, we did not. It's for the common, the common folk? <laughs> yeah, Vince, when are we going? Vince is too busy. Vince is, Vince is busy being an archaeologist. He doesn't have time for these things. Chat Time says, Glen Fittich 18 is better than the standard 12. I know, it's weird. It's so strange to me how some of these distilleries, like... The 15 to the 21 or the 12 to the 18, it's, it, it doesn't even seem like it's the same at all. They're so, so, so much better. So after the um, um, drinking, there was drinking. I know that's hard to believe. But after the drinking, we decided to go north, and we went way north. And we're going to talk about that in just 60 seconds after we take a break. So hang with us. Some of you might see a commercial. Some of you might just see Be Right Back. But we will be back in 60 seconds. You're not going to miss a thing. Bye. That's not right. <laughs> so I uh, I put up this little map because I keep saying stuff like we're we're going here, we're going there. Did you see what, what Monique said? Only 4K for the cheap stuff, lol. Yeah, right. And then uh, Tracy says, I need a new side hustle. The cheap stuff is way out of my budget. <laughs> yeah, ours too. Tomcat says, I think I need another drink now. Mm. Hey, cheers to you. Uh, is McCollins distilled in Scotland? It's my favorite. Yeah, it is. I don't know if it's um, distributed other places now, but it is um, originally in Scotland. Uh, your mic is still muted, it says. You must be hearing it from mine. And I'm I back. remembered. Christy, is my audio better now? <laughs> Christy has the good audio this time. I actually did something right for a change. Brian's usually whispering to me, telling me what to do.
Your sound is still low. Oh, there you go. Never mind. I said. I'm like, turn on your mic, and then I don't turn mine on. Yeah. See how that is? So, such so bossy. Um. So anyway, I stick up this little map so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. So I put the number one here. That was that first hotel we went to. Um, number two, you can see how far north we're going, way up there, but still not nearly as north as Scotland goes because this looked way too cold for me. Thank you for subscribing, Tomcat. Now, because you subscribe with Prime, I have to say the little jingle. It don't cost you a dime to subscribe to Octopolis <laughs> with Twitch Prime. They make me do that. If I don't do it, the Prime van shows up outside our house. They it, come. They take me out. You saw the videos of like the cops arresting people, like to jump out of the vans, they get people. That's what Prime does too, so I have to say it. Yeah. Now <laughs> now back to your regularly scheduled Christie. And he's only had one and a half weed drams. Anyway, um, the um, way up north thing there is the number two right there. That's where we're going. And if you look in the Avemore, the where it says Avemore area, that in the, about the E is where Albalore is. And so it doesn't look very far on the map, but it took us forever to get there. It took a whole day. Thanks for slapping the applause sticker, Tracy. Oh, right over the coo's head. That's we'll right. get to there in a minute. So anyway, the next stop was this fantastic place right on in Nairn. Nairn is right on the water there, the cold uh, south, I mean south, North Sea. Nairn, or like they like to think of it as like the the Mediterranean of the north or something. This like you would think this was like a beach town, but it like again. The high was 50 degrees in rain, and they're like, oh, it's the heat of summer. No one will come now. Hi, Kylie. How you doing? Hey, are you being good? Junkie. Good to see you. The real question there is, are you being good? Probably don't answer that, Jay. Um, so anyway, um, the uh, it's a good thing those kids know I already cussed. Jade's listening in the car. Um, so this place is called Newton House. It was called Newton Hotel, but um, this was actually a hunting lodge from someone. Um, it's like Skyfall. Yeah, some rich person. And um, it's been restored, and it was amazing. Um, I'll show you a picture. I actually remember to take a picture of the bedroom for this one. And again, this was not expensive at all compared to staying somewhere else. Um, and we were there in the low season. We were there in the summer. Yeah, but, but it still. was still very inexpensive. But I don't know how you could be there in the winter. There'd be 90 foot of snow and 20 well, degrees below zero. I think, I think zero. everybody comes through June and everybody comes after August, but nobody comes in July. Yeah, that's, that's the way true. they kept. We would go places like, oh, we close for July. Yeah, it's too hot. No one yeah. will come. Do they use antlers and all of their decorating? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, it's a thing. So this place was amazing. Yeah, it was um, really cool. It, I like all these different little architectural features. Speaking of antlers and everything, I'm going to show you one. This is just and, like and Nairn, over a door. Nairn was probably the biggest city outside of Glasgow that we saw. Like it was pretty, it was pretty big sized. Well, that's because we didn't go through Edinburgh. We just went. Well, on the yeah, edge. I'm saying once you go north is what I'm saying. Inverness it's up there. Is yeah, big. Inverness is pretty big, but like once you go north. You know, it's a lot of smaller villages, and this was a pretty good sized town. Yeah, so you can see the the leaping deer there over the thing, and those wolfy doggy things um, that are essentially gargoyles, but they're wolfy doggy things. Um, and Tom, Tomcat talking about the weather says, "Who doesn't like Hoth?" Although that was Norway, but it could no, have been Scotland. No Hoth. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not cutting open a tauntaun to survive, people. That's not happening. No, I'm going south. I'll cut open a cask of that ovalur, though. Oh, well, that'll yeah. keep him warm. I'll be in trouble. So this place, we ended up um, having breakfast here. And um, again, it's just so neat and huge. You just can't believe that this was people's like just house. Um, and not just house. This was just like their hunting lodge. This was their hunting lodge. This is where they just house. went for fun. They it was an, um, The last owner was an English lord. And so this was his northern estate, way northern estate. But see the Highland cows? If you have never seen the Highland cows, what? Uh, Monique, we will get to that as soon as Christy tells her cow story. Look, it's a Highland Coo. Are they not adorable? <laughs> um, Brian's drawing one in his drawing too. Mm -hmm. And I actually, my hi, my cow says, uh, let me read this. It says, uh, made exclusively for hidden gems of Scotland. But I found, wait for it. Oops. I can't copy and paste. I don't know how, apparently. Um, I found one that you two can own on Amazon. It looks oh, exactly like him. I'm like, I had to go all the way to Scotland to get him. He's so adorable. They have bangs. And to see him in person, it was really, really cute. 
I have pictures, and I will show you. All right, so before, Scottish breakfast. before the pictures, before any more stories, Monique has redeemed a Christy Tells a Childhood Story. Oh, shit. Um, so Christy is going to tell you a story from her childhood. It may or may not involve her father. <laughs> um, okay, I got one. Speaking of Highland Coos, um, this is not about a cow, but um, when I was really little, we, my dad and I used to go walking in the woods because we lived out in the middle of nowhere, as I mentioned last time. Apparently we were dirt poor and I had no idea. Um, and um, when we would go walking, one day it was like kind of chilly and I had on like a sweatshirt with a little hoodie on the back and we were standing in the woods and I think I might have been griping about something, you know, cold or are we home yet or that kind of thing. And we're just standing there. And the next thing I know, a squirrel, literally, not making this up, this is actual fact, runs up my leg and jumps and sits in my hood. And um, he was a little tiny guy. He'd apparently fallen out of the nest or something and got abandoned, or he was after I took him home, because I took him home. And I named him Hickory Net. And he actually lived with us, and he would, yeah, obviously outside, but he would come and he would hang out with me and he would ride on my shoulder and in my clothes and go for walks and he hung out with my dad and stuff for years. And then my parents got divorced, not years, it was like a year. But um, my parents got divorced and um, we obviously moved out of a, that house into a different one. And they told me, and I never caught on to this, but they told me that Hickory Nut went to live with my grandparents. Um, and then I went to visit Hickory Nut with my grandparents and they lived in town. And I got the story that Hickory Nut was hit by a car. But now I'm thinking that Hickory Nut just got abandoned and nobody wanted to tell me that and he never made it to town because who's gonna transfer a squirrel to town? But when I was seven years old, I didn't think about that. And it wasn't until like, you know, two years ago, Brian and I were talking about this story and he's like, yeah, he went to a farm up north. And I'm like, oh shit, Hickory North went to a farm up north. <laughs> I had, didn't even dawn on me as a kid, but I had a pet squirrel named Hickory Nut. There you go. All right, so there is a one of the awesome stories from Christy's childhood. I'm glad you think those are funny, Brian. Um, I think they're hilarious. Uh, Retro Shinobi says, uh, Ashley says, hi. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, McShawn says, uh, is that a scientific term for the wolfy doggy thing? Yes, it is. We feel free uh, to use that. Let's do this with, we're about, about Hoth says, ooh, Star Wars jokes. Chow Time says, what's the typical Scottish breakfast? Mm. Um, it's the same as an English breakfast, a full, a full English if you've had that. Bangers. A fry up. Yeah, fry, a bangers, um, which are little sausages and usually fried tomato and um, some sort of bread, um, either a scone or a muffin kind of thing. And they always bring you the fancy toast holder thing. Yeah, you get the little rack that holds individual slices of toast. Right. Um, usually would, an it egg. Would, it wouldn't be blimey without the toast rack. Yeah. And usually a sunny side up egg. And Tomcat jokes about breakfast. He's like, a glass of scotch. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> which they don't call scotch, which is even more funny. I know. Poor hickory nut. <laughs> there was um, a Tracy says, get that effing cow. <laughs> and thankfully, Les Dudas allowed that to go through. Thank you, Maude. <laughs> uh, Ultraman says, it's, it's the real life squirrel girl. Did you see the next one? And Monique says... Aww. And Chat Time says, there was an ad where you can buy a small plot of land in Scotland so you can have the title of Lord and Lady. Guess what my next thing is? It's like you're reading our minds. Oh, wait. First, we have to look at pictures of cows. Because I love these cows. We will get to Lord and Lady Christie. Uh, I have documentation. Don't you worry. Tracy says, poor hickory nut. Monique says, poor squirrel. Bex says, Christie stories are the best. <laughs> Bex is hard to mock because Bex had to dig with me in the Middle East and sit in the same square for hours. And Monique says, that squirrel was probably sad. Yeah, he was sad to miss me, I bet. I'm sure he missed you. Now, Christy does bond with animals. We were just in Colorado, as you guys know, who come to the day daytime streams. And we went, we went, we hiked up like 10,000 feet to a lake on the top of a mountain. Mm. And there were little tiny chipmunks. chipmunk guys running around. And everyone's like, oh, that's so cute. The chipmunks run around. One of them ran right up to Christy and right to her foot and sat down and was like, hey, Christy, I'm here to hang out with you. He and did. He did we not did. hang out with anyone else except for Christy. I'm adorable. I hate people that know me. No comment. Um, <laughs> so, cows. Um, stop, I'm going to die. Tracy doesn't believe that I'm adorable and <laughs> nice and sweet. <laughs> Um, I'm not like, talking to you, Tracy. I'm talking about cows. Tomcat says, we'll be Lord Tom, Tomcat and Lord Sean, apparently. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, so Scottish cows, if you've never seen them before, what makes them so adorable is that they have horns and they're very woolly because, hey, it's cold there. And they have bangs. The bangs make them. They're the best things in the world. And so, I mean, you instantly know if it's a Scottish. And they call them coo. They pronounce them coo. And so they're Scottish coos. That's right. 
the coos are over the there. The coos. If you want to go see the coos, you must go out back. And you're like, oh, they're so adorable. And I took all these photos that I wasn't through here real quick. Because they're so cute. I love them. I actually have a printout of one somewhere, too, where I made a photo of him and put him on my wall because he's adorable. <laughs> and I grew up with cows. I grew up on a big on a farm. And, you know, our cows in America are not nearly this adorable. I'm just saying. Um, Archduke. Yeah. Uh, Randy Cake says, Christy is a real-life Disney princess. Well, I don't know about the princess part. Chow Time says, I'd prefer to be called Archduke. It's Chow Time. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. All right. So, speaking of the famous uh, Lord and Lady. If you did not know, there is actually a way to become a Lord and Lady. A Scottish Laird. A Scottish Laird. Uh, Brian did this for my birthday one year, actually. And, uh uh-oh, where's my documentation? Deed of Entitlement, blah, 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 Lady Christie Miller of Dunnan's Castle. Can you zoom in on enough to see that enough? Lady Christy, you can just continue to refer to Is it Dr. Lady or Lady Doctor? I think Dr. Lady sounds better. Lady Doctor sounds like a 1960s show. <laughs> but anyway, this place, um, it is probably the same one you saw. They are trying to restore it. Um, and it is, uh, it has all kinds of problems, but they're actually doing a lot more these days. Th- these pictures from about three years ago. And it's the one I'm drawing too. Oh yeah, it's the one in the picture that Brian's making. Um, but it is, uh, it had a fire and it burnt out the whole interior. And so they're restoring it. And so the main structure was left and they're actually living in the dowager house. So, you know, lords and ladies, they lived here. And then once you became the dowager means that your son has ascended. If you've seen Downton Abbey, you know all about it. Right. And so, um, they didn't have a, they didn't have a dowager house. Oh yeah, they did. Sure they did. With, um, what Maggie Smith. But usually they're they're adjacent. Um, they're like right next door, and so they're living in their dower house. Monique says, "Dr. Christie, Lady of the Manor." There, oh, I like that. That's good. And Retro says, "I love that show." Yeah, me too. And wait till I show you in the next, the last castle we stayed in. Super cool. Um, so this one is uh, well, it hasn't changed yet, but you can see that. Uh, I'm not complaining, but you guys might be slacking on the hydrates a little bit. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> Brian's just gonna keep drinking no matter what. So. Um, Oh, see, so this one is, you can see that how big this thing is and that they are slowly working to restore it. But what you get is that you get um, a square, which is ironic that it's a square. One Wouldn't meter, it be a meter? One yeah, meter. Okay, a meter. That makes much more sense. One meter square. A one meter of land as a deed. So therefore you own a part of this property. So therefore you can call yourself. You don't own the property. You just own the fishing rights. No, you own this no. square. I own the rights to this square. That's right. The You're fishing right. rights to that. And square. my particular one, not all of them have fishing rights though, hello. Well, I, we bought on the on the river. Mine has enough to be right there. Um uh, Did you guys plan this? Oh, look, hydrate, hydrate. There's lots of them. Oh my goodness. Look, 1 2 3 4 five, 4 for me alone. I, I'll be back later. Well, luckily there's only 4 for me, so Say goodbye to this. Brian's just ready to move on to his next drink, let's face it. There's one. Thank you, let's do this. Can I build a Barbie dream house on my square? Yes. You can do anything you want on your square. Thank you, chow time. The um, the guy in the background, by the way, in this photo, that's the dude that we couldn't understand a word he said. This one's for you, Retro Shinobi. <laughs> Christy gets it twice. I, I'm on it. And thank you, Bex. Christy drinks and knows things. Word. <laughs> it's like the story of my life. Maybe the more Christy drinks, the more she thinks she knows things. <laughs> Our church Shelby's like, four glasses? Where are we at? Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank Keep you, up. Cancer. Almost got this one finished, and then we'll move on to the third we dream of the night. So, um, again, we were saying that, you know, there's the river that runs, the firth that runs right through here. And so this one that's coming up will show you that how cool this is. And this place had to have a bridge built. And this is the only way to the property because of the water surrounds it. And so it's obviously protected. And let me tell you how hard it was to find this place. It did take a while. Luckily, I drive like a bat out of hell on these back roads because there's nobody on them. And so we went up and down and sideways and left and right and over hill and dale trying to find this place. But and we like managed Chris said, it. you end up going across this really kick-ass little stone bridge to get there. Well, and apparently the stone bridge is in desperate need of repair as we drove over it. 
Um, but it is um, this particular style of arches is like one of the oldest examples of this particular style of arches in this area or some shit. I don't remember. But um, it is uh, it was super cool and super impressive. And here's another one of those gargoyle woofy things. Um, this is actually a little dude that spits. And so when it rains, this is the rain spout. How cool is that? Oh, you can't see it yet. Hold, please. He'll be there in a second. Um, but it's still super neat. And the other thing we found out about this is that um, this is adjacent to the McNaughton land. And as I said, my mother was a McNaughton. And obviously my grandparents and all the way back were McNaughtons and they're Scottish. And um, the McNaughton land is just like literally down the road from here, but um, it's a, owned by a private family now that has nothing to do with the McNaughton clan anymore. Monique just cheered 20 shamrock bits. That's so cool. And um, Retro Shinobi says, I don't know much on Scotland, but I have family that are Irish and they live right near, near oh. Kilkenny Castle. Mm -hmm. Cool. Tomcat says, you would have fun driving in the Perigord in France. Mm -hmm. Somewhat hilly winding roads. Yes, yeah. I would have fun for the sure. You, you, you know about the Perigord. You just don't know that you know about it. Um, and then he also says we're, uh, oh, oh, Shinobi says that we're talking about visiting it after all this nonsense passes. It is totally worth it. it oh, is, yeah so cool literally but also it is just really neat um you know there's also the crazy as well but you know the crazy being what is scotland known for scotch what else is scotland known for robert de bruce oh, wow you're good what else is scotland known for we're talking about the crazy nessie thank you nessie Monique's like kilts. <laughs> yeah, that too. Cows now. Oh, before we get off of the castle, are you going to show them your bear oh, and your... I forgot about my bear. And, and your blanket. This is my bear. So, when you go there, you can purchase things in order to help them fund the castle. So he's got his little kilt on and, and his little tan. Yeah, they have their own plaid. And his sporin. Well, it's kind of a fake sporin, but you get it. And his... Um, hold on, let me get it right. Skin ba, which is the little knife. That probably has an Arabic pronunciation. It's for Scottish, but you know what I mean. It's the little knife that goes in their boots. Um, his is fake, um, but you you can buy the bear when you get the when you buy the land, buy the land to become. Um, yeah, where is Brian's kilt? That's a good question. You become Laird and Lady. Um, Instead I actually, of a kilt, I just bought a bow tie with their with their. And we plaid have this lovely thing, so I could wear the tartan. The McNaughton plaid, by the way, the McNaughton tartan is um, very different. It's uh, black and it's actually Christmas colors, but it has uh, yellow going through it. You can look them up. There's all kinds of ways to look up your um, your your plaids and see if your family ties and your crest and all that. The problem is, is that you know you think you're going to be lord and lady, whatever, and really you were the dude mucking out the stalls in the back, and you're still a McNaughton, <laughs> but you know you were the serf McNaughton, not the king McNaughton. Um, Retro Shinobi says, "Ah, the airy breeze." And Beck <laughs> yes. says, "I love that bear." Um, Tomcat says, "Maybe Brian needs to drink more to remember the Paragord." As we established tonight, the more you drink, the more you know. True that. Uh, Retro says, Brian, you have a kilt? Oh, the story's my share. I don't have a kilt, sorry. Uh, Tomcat redeemed a hydrate, which is going to have me finish this one off, and I'll start another one eventually. Mm. I just posted up a um, link to the Facebook of Dunnan's Castle, which is, I'm sure, the same one that we were talking about earlier that you had seen as well. Um, it is the... Uh, Facebook page, and that's how you can find them now and look yeah, at them. Yeah, you and can you can stuff. help to restore the castle. You can become a laird or a lady or both. So um, we were uh, going to talk about Nessie, darling Nessie. Um, I don't want you to get really upset about this, but uh, Nessie's not real. Okay? What? But this is her lake. I'm showing you a picture of the Loch Ness. I call bullshit. No, Nessie. Um, Monique childhood start story. I used to wear a tartan scarf in fifth and sixth grade, but it's because I was Bay City Rollers fan. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. S A D U R D A Y. <laughs> nice. In retro, Shinobi does not believe me that. Um, sorry, but no evidence of Nessie. Um, however, uh, it is a very beautiful lock, and, and they a great have, drive. And beautiful it's drive. Really pretty drive, and you go near. Uh, you go past it around to Ben Nevis. Um, ben Nevis is the tallest mountain in Scotland and across the moors, and it looks just like Skyfall, the James Bond. Oh opening. my gosh, yeah, it did. It looked exactly like it was amazing, guys. The drive was like stupendous. <laughs> He's like, I still would not swim in the lock at night. 
but you'll be fine. Um, we did buy a little uh, barrel of scotch with Nessie's picture on it, just so we would never forget little I'm Nessie. I'm assuming it's horrid tasting, but we yeah, got it. It's still in the barrel, notice. <laughs> we have not opened it. And for uh, Bex specifically, you're never going to believe who sponsors the Loch Ness Museum full of bullshit. Sir Ranoff Fines. <laughs> Now, that is in hysterical. The, in the world of archaeology, they all hate That's this hysterical. Guy. And um, if you come in next week, we'll talk more about Sir Ranoff Fines and my personal experiences with Ran. Um, but here is Ran right here. And um, he is the one that funds the Loch Ness Museum. And it is shite, let me just tell you. But um, just that's just an insider thing there because I was hoping Bex would be here and she would know who Ran is. But there you go. Yeah, um, Bex is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Les Duda says, Nessie is just too sly to be caught. And Chow Time says, uh, Skyfall is the best Craig Bond movie. By, all, by far. Uh, and great theme song, too. Uh, Retro Shinobi says, what is this shenanigans? Uh, Tomcat <laughs> says, that looks like scientific proof to me. You got a picture. Uh, yeah. Bex is like, no. Retro Shinobi was like hoping you said, was hoping you said you lol. I don't get oh, that one. Hoping you said it was me. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Like I paid. Yeah, no, I did not. And then Bex uh, for Randolph Fines is like, why is that not surprising? Yeah, and if you knew Rand, you would know why that's not surprising. But I will say that the, the funniest part about going to stop and see Nessie is that all of Scotland is like a quaint villages and it's very homey and everyone's very personable and then when you get to where all the stuff is for the Loch Ness Monster it's like a scam yeah it's like super touristy so it's like a roadside attraction you know it's like Gravity Falls where it's like Branson Missouri or it's like the biggest ball of twine or it's just like super tourist explosion right in the middle of nowhere yeah how dare you <laughs> he's such a load of crap you know who Rand is Retro Shinobi, you know who Rand finds this? If if you really do, you he really is a load of crap. Yeah, he's a load of crap. His son, or is his son or grandson or nephew or nephews. A, nephew. Good actors, but yeah. Ra Rafe and um, Joseph are his nephews. Yeah. I've heard the name and stories. Yeah, he's an explorer. He's um Let's do this says he sounds like a Bond villain. <laughs> he's got more money than brains, let's go with that. Um, yeah. It's crazy. The, uh, but the cool thing was, is that in the... Uh-oh, Brian's moving to the Lego Vaughn. All right, guys. The last we dream of the night. Now, I say this for last, because this this will blow out your palate. <laughs> this is the Log of Vulan, 16-year. Now, this is an Isla, and so it's super peaty, super smoky, but hands down, one of, the, one of my favorite all-time scotches. So, if you aren't a fan of smoke or aren't a fan of peat and i'm not this one it might make you a fan so you have to give the lagavool and 16 a try sometime special occasions only right this is the one you buy like once hydrate. every five years hydrate That's two people good. are hydrating you better get on it all right here comes the hydrate gotta gotta actually get the bottle open makes a good sound it does make a good sound you, i can come home and know if brian has been drinking this or not the oh, whole yeah. house smells like it it's so smoky you can smell it across the house for sure all that peat. Gross. Mm. Oh, wait. Don't leave me out. Thanks, Beck. I, I appreciate that, Bex. You know how I like to drink. <laughs> okay. So, Chow Time says hydrate. Cheers to you, Chow Time. Retro mm. Shinobi did too. Mm -mm -mm. How very Ron Swanson of you. <laughs> um, and cheers to you, Retro Shinobi. I used to love scotch, but lost my taste for it. I'm more bourbon now. Yeah, bourbon is definitely easier to drink, and there's it's so much more accessible. Yeah, there's actually a whole big deal about whiskey and how only whiskey mm. should be whiskey. That's from Scotland, and you do you leave out the e. It should be whiskey with no e, just y, and all kinds of stuff. When you go there, you hear them talking about it. It's really cool. Sometime we'll have to do an episode on the bourbon trail because we had such yeah. a good time. And I'll drink some of the bourbons, but and only made some really good friends in Bardstown. So that'll have to be a future episode. For Red sure. Stag. Mm. <laughs> um, I put the map back up here so you can we were talking about the different areas obviously the um, the highlands have their own particular kind and um, 
uh, there, it, the whole, the way the map is divided out is the way the, um, there's Islay over here on the side. You can see the way it's divided out is where the different scotches come from. And yeah, Oban so. is another one of Brian's favorite, and we had hoped to go there. But um, the drive from Loch Ness to Ben Nevitz was, uh, like I said, through a bunch of moors and peat and bogs and stuff. And oh, it was, it was so beautiful. Really cool, but it took four for reeking ever. And so we ended and up And we did to stay at Dunn's Castle probably a lot longer than we anticipated because it was yeah. just so cool. And um, the little gift shop that was at the um, Loch Ness disaster there was a little gift shop there though and they had fun shit i bought a ton oh, yeah. of crap there that's I, where we got the nessie thing i will say we didn't stay at the loch ness tourist area very long but you could i mean there yeah. was so much stuff to see and do you could spend a whole day just doing that if you wanted to and i got the uh, dr kentucky during kentucky derby week christy could drink mint julep's word and i love horses yeah, we, you have no idea how much i love horses so. we've always wanted to go for one of the races um I'm a, um, a Maker's Mark ambassador, and so we could have had like free tickets to go, not to Kentucky Derby, but to the um, the one in April. I forget what it's called. The one that, that Maker's Mark sponsors. And um, one of these years we'll make it for sure. Yeah, it would. that would be fun. Um, did they have cute stuffed animal Nessies? They did. I did not purchase a Nessie. Oh, but I do have something fun for you that I did purchase, and I found one on eBay for you. Let me make sure I just put the right thing in there. Yeah. This... If you go look at, is the Nessie tea strainer. I have it in my office at school and I can't get to my office right now, but um, I did buy the Nessie tea strainer. His long neck sticks out and you put his butt in there and that's where you put your tea. It's so it can make a cup of tea. It's oh, the Nessie cute. soup label, ladle too. Yeah, they had those too. Super fun with his long neck. <laughs> the other thing they had was these little individual scotch, scotches. So I got the McNaughton clan scotch. Um, the light's kind of bad there, but it's Clan McNaughton Scotch. This, and you know, it's total bullshit. But you get to see. Um, oh crap! I got a drink. Hold, please. It's terrible. Mm. Oh, thank you, Monique. You get to oh, imposter. oh and imposter check. That's thank you, you so me. much. I slurch. I slump over. Anyway, this McNaughton thing. I just thought it was cool because it has um, a little bit of our tartan on it, and the Clan um, McNaughton actually means. Um, uh, hope in God or something like that is what just the cat up with that. Oh. Hi, Indio. Indio's stretching behind Brian now, if you can see. You'll see her butt sticking out behind his ear. <laughs> she's spinning around. Hi, Indio. What you doing? <laughs> oh, there she's more in camera now. <laughs> A little bit. There she goes. Yeah, you can see her then. <laughs> Too funny. So, anyway. Um, Thank you, Chow Time. Um, this is the scotch. Um, so, we... Uh, didn't make it to Oban, but Brian does love Oban as well. Yeah. And, you know, Oban and Isla, they're both on the waterfront. And, you know, like I said, guys, you, you don't think of the UK as that big. And you don't think of Scotland as that big. Scotland's but, tiny. But but it's it takes a long time to get places. And we, so you We started need... at two on this map. And we went through Loch Ness, through Ben Nevis. And then we cut through over to Glasgow and came down to where this number three is. And it took us all day long. And this is, in America, that would be like a two and a half hour drive. And it took yeah. us like seven hours. I mean, we stopped, of course, and stuff like that, but it was nothing. And there's a famous uh, <laughs> road, road trip even farther north up in the Highlands oh, yeah. uh, called the, the, I think it's just called the Highlands 550 because it's a 550 mile drive. And they say once you go north of Nairn, it's like empty roads. There's even less people there, mm -hmm. and um, you know the people will will just go and like do like road tours and stuff to just get away from the crowds. There's also a famous thing of driving from John O'Groats at the way north um, all the way down to the south tip of the UK, um, and obviously we didn't have a chance to do that. But that's like a you know just like one of those like it, in America we have Route 66, mm -hmm. and in, in the UK they have that where they drive from the north to the south. So we have, I thought Oban was Japanese whiskey. Whoops. Nope. And then we have, I thought Obi-Wan was a Jedi. <laughs> Different guy. Although, Ewan is Scottish. That's true. And if you strike down the Oban, it will come back stronger than you ever imagined. <laughs> nice. You Star Wars nerds. Um, so the last castle we stayed at um, was this awesome place. It was so cool. Called Springkel. Let me see if I can get a decent 
photo of the outside of it up here for you. Here we go. Here's a giant photo of it. I think I have a brochure of it too. Oh, it doesn't have a picture though. Well, that's no good. It was so amazing. Oh, it's the same picture of the photo I took, so that doesn't help you out any. But um, it was it was Downton Abbey. It is huge. It is amazing. There's a nice little photo of it. Um, there's the front entrance. Um, here's the whole lawn. Um, you'll see it in the next one. And, it, and like amazing. when Christy says it was Downton Abbey, like their story is Downton Abbey. Yeah. So tell them the story. You talked to the dude forever. The guy oh, that owns it. Oh my gosh. It. So, um, so first of all, this house. Watch until he's This house only has, I think, two or three rooms that have the in suite bathroom where you get the bathroom and the shower in the same room. And the rest of it is like individual bedrooms. Then you have a shared bathroom. So we, I had, you know, being Americans, we're like, hey, we really need to like have our own private bathroom. They're like, no problem. We can arrange that. Well, we get there and they're like, oh, yeah, it's like low season. Nobody comes here in July. It's you and Christy and one other couple in the entire castle. And they literally yes. told us, they're like, you can stay in the room you paid for or you can stay in any other room you want except for the one the other couple is in. They're like, we don't care. They're like, just run amok. Do whatever you like. So as we went down and we're having drinks and stuff and talking to the, the what I thought was the bartender and the, the waitress, you know, the waitress we found out that they're the ones that own the property. And then we found out not only that, it was this guy's family estate. He's Lord Somebody. Yeah, he's like Lord Somebody. He grew up in this house. As Lord Somebody, as a kid. You know, and now he's living in the basement of his own home because when his, he was like a lawyer, I think. Mm -hmm. He was a in lawyer London. in London doing really well for himself. And I'm a really car guy well. and he was a car guy and we were talking about all of the cars he used to have and stuff. And when his father died the rest of the family was like we don't have enough money to save this place the government's going to take it away death on, taxes they on, have to pay death on, taxes on taxes and so he quit his lawyer position you know got paid out by the firm he was at paid off or sold all of his cars moved the family into the the family house and paid all the taxes and turned it into like a bed and breakfast and so it's like so much like the Downton Abbey story. It's crazy. And the house, it's, the castle itself was very much like a, set up like a Downton Abbey. Yeah, so I have that picture somewhere I'm looking it for. It was just so weird that like, can you imagine like hmm. coming back to your family home, but living in the basement and being like the servants to all the people who were staying there? It was, it was crazy. It was very crazy. Yeah. But he was so nice. He was so sweet. Such a nice, and they're a nice couple and she did the cooking and he tended bar and fixed the stuff and talked to everybody. But yeah, we were shocked that he... <laughs> That the bartender was a Lord so and so, the whoever that owns the place. And so his because, family wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah, the rest of his family wanted nothing to do with it. And he was talking about how like they support the whole town there, kind of like in Abalor. So it was very interesting. And, and there's a farm still associated with it, and the farm employs people as well. And yeah, it was really really neat. And on top of that, cheesy Brian photo, true. <laughs> that's what I'm best at. Um, Retro says, sad to see all of it change there and just imagine what it could be now. I mean, yeah, it is it is sad. I mean, at least he's saving it because the other option would be that the government takes it over and like either bulldozes it or turns it into something else, you know. Government building. Yeah. So pretty crazy. Here's the bells, like Downton Dal Abbey. They would ring. So there's a, a corresponding one. Our rooms even had them. And so the, in your room, there's a pull and the pull rings down to through the walls into the system and it rings down and it rings the appropriate bell and the little things that are bobbies that are hanging down there and the little plaques tell you who it is, what room is ringing. And so that's how the servants knew who to come to. Um, but it's the same system. And this is just one set. There was like three different sets of them. It was really cool. Yeah, we got to explore the whole house, the whole ground, like, like it was empty. So we had the run of the place. It was really cool. Yeah, and I mean, just the setting, this is the lawns, You you if you read, slutty romance novels like me, um, they're always talking about, I read historical slutty rom and Scottish slutty romance novels, and um, they're always talking about the front lawns and the, the gardens and all that stuff. Well, I have a picture coming up here in just a second. This is what you set on their front porch, so to speak, and this is what you see. I mean, it's just amazing. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely amazing. And I, I loved all the places we stayed at, but this was probably my favorite, and probably just because we made a connection with the guy. But it was just so beautiful, and it really did feel like Downton Abbey, and we were in the middle of watching all that at the time. So, 
yeah, I made us go back and watch all of it for sure. I love it. I love the whole thing. I thought it was just the coolest place. And like, you know, we keep saying, so worth your while. And there, there was a ton of choices. We just happened to randomly pick this route because it worked. But you could have gone to a bunch of different places um, and different castles. There are lots of people are trying to save their houses through um, B&B kind of things. I'm seeing how Brian's doing on his drawing. I can only see it if I watch the stream too. Oh, yeah. I'm, I've got the inks done. I'm starting on the... The cow looks now. good. That's really all that matters. <laughs> wow! Oh, Monique, thanks for the sound alert. Appreciate wow. that. I saw that nod, Christy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Throw in the historical. <laughs> and uh, Richard Shinobi sa says, uh, damn government. Yeah. Here is... Oh, this is another little... Um, this is um, a view for not the servants' quarters, but like the kitchens, the windows that you would oversee. And this would go into a kitchen garden originally, but now it's just a garden. But it's just so cool. And I have one coming up of just the basement plan, just what they have all the plans for all of the levels. And um, you can see in just one second here, if it ever loads, that I just happened to have this photo. I thought it was cool of the basement. Just see all the rooms that are in the basement. Because, you know, you think servants' quarters are typically in the attics, but the servants also have the run of the basements because that's where all the storage is and all how they move about and stuff. And so if you look at this thing, it's huge. I mean, that's a crap ton of rooms for your basement. Yeah, and so he and his family stayed in the basement, and like Christy was saying, there was definitely, like, passageways and stuff where they could mm -hmm. get from one wing to the other or whatever with the basement with never being seen. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, you know, as Americans, we just have... Yeah, exactly. He just said, Roger Schnell, we just said, we have nothing like that here. Exactly. We don't. And, and, you know, somebody said earlier that, you know, we're so young. Yeah, we're bare, not even 300 years old, and we act like we know everything in the world, and it's amazing. It's super cool. So cool. Okay, you have to look at gray screen while I open up the next thing. Oh, okay. Chrissy's going to load the next picture. But I'll tell you guys, like, you know, I didn't know what to expect going to Scotland. And I had such a great time. And kind of like we talked about Egypt where you go from Cairo out to Luxor. And it's kind of like going from the big city of, like, it's like going from Manhattan to the, to the country. It's sort of the same thing. Like, when you go to Scotland, you know, you, you, you go to London and it's the hustle and bustle and it's the city. <laughs> And then you go out to Scotland and it's the country and it's a little, it's more laid back and it's fresh air and it's outdoorsy. So it's just a nice contrast. The other thing was once you get out of London, everything was so much cheaper. I mean, London is so expensive and we got up into Scotland and all of a sudden we're like, oh, hey, this isn't really any different than being in America. You know, in London, everything's double or triple or quadruple the price. Tom Cat said, I said, there's nothing like this there. And Tom Cat said, there's medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's exactly the same. <laughs> Retro's like, the cheese, yeah, lol. No doubt. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> so the last place that I made uh, made Brian go to um, was Gretna Green. And if you've never heard of Gretna Green, Gretna Green is um, right on the border of Scotland and England. It is the actual border. of It used to be of Scotland and England. And um, so the biggest fear as an English person, an English father, would be that your daughter would have get absconded by some dastardly rake and rush her off to Gretna Green because marriage laws in Scotland are completely different than they are in England. And in Scotland, all you have to do is uh, hand fast. So you, pro, um, you say your vows sort of to each other and hold hands uh, in front of God and that's all that matters. Now you're married. Good job. Um, and so at Gretna Green, you could run off and get married and you didn't have to have anybody's permission. You didn't have to do anything. And the, it started out that there was um, a blacksmith's shop that was like the, the biggest building in Gretna Green. Rich was like, that sounds legit. <laughs> it totally was. And so because the blacksmith shop was the biggest building, that's where people would end up going. And they'd be like, can you marry us? And um, Now, can you imagine going down to like the Ford dealer and be like, <laughs> we need to get married. We can, need to get hitched. Hitch well, and, and, you know, the Scottish Highway, the uh, Old North Highway, is the highway that runs from London to Glasgow. Well, it eventually went to Edinburgh, but it really goes to Edinburgh, but it veers off. But anyway, it goes through Gretna, and that's right at the border. So if you could make it from London to um, Gretna by carriage, then you were free and clear. Or you could be absconded and be forced into marriage um, if you got a shady blacksmith. <laughs> 
that wouldn't stand up for the woman, and so then they would be married, and you would be forced to then once your family found you go back, and you would you would be married by under Scottish like, oh, law. Like, oh darn it, I'm married now. Yeah, and so you got her dowry, and you got all of her money, and whatever, and so it's it's like the super famous place, but it was also very romantic. So that like people that were um in um yeah, it's a Vegas wedding. So if you were um, of different classes and your family didn't um, bless or wouldn't let you get married, you could run off to Gretna Green and they would call it getting married over the anvil because it was the blacksmith. And so actually part of the whole idea of metal wedding bands, one of the, it, they did it in other places too, but one of them was the blacksmith would be like, so what are you going to buy? Or give me a tip or whatever. And so they started buying rings because they would be for horses and they had all these things made up that were rings. And so it became a symbol. So how cool is that? I uh, love Gretna Green. Monique says, we reenact the Revolutionary War and had a couple do a Scottish hand fasting wedding mm-hmm. at, and even, oh, as their actual wedding. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I made, uh, at our wedding, um, I, Brian and I, I made us write our own vows and say them, um, it, well, and it was essentially a hand fasting, but I just didn't tell anybody they didn't know it. <laughs> but we, had, we did have a Justin for Peace, too. But, oh, oh, I heard music. Thank Star you. Wars. Evan's here. I know Hi, that Evan. sound. Good to see you, Evan. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Thursday Night Treasures. We're talking all about our adventures in Scotland and eventually Star Wars Celebration in London. We're getting there. We're finishing Gretna Green yeah, here. No rush. Um... This is the famous hand fasting statue at Gretna. Unfortunately, because of the way we had to get to Star Wars Celebration to set up, you know, to do actual work, the reason why we were there, um, we had to go through Gretna right before it opened. So I didn't get to go into any of the shops or anything because I could have spent a ton of time at Gretna. I'm obsessed with this place. Oh, there's the um, the statue of the hands. Um, I don't really know if there's any other. There's a little garden and some the famous blacksmith shop. You can see that I'm in a sweater like every single time in like, every one of these pictures. And Again, did I mention it's the hottest all, day of yeah, the year? They're all getting naked and like, oh, it's so hot. And I'm like, I need another layer. <laughs> a lightsaber's music to your ears. You've been well trained. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Evan. So... Oh, I think I have one more that you have to wait and see because, again, I'm obsessed with this place. But now this is a whole touristy thing, right? You know, it's it's kind of... It's not quite a schmoozy as Loch Ness, but it's pretty schmoozy. Or the Vegas wedding. Right, or the Vegas wedding. Uh, nothing against the Brits, lovely people in place, but that show is rough when we have it there. Huh? Oh, Star Wars Celebration is what we uh, Yeah. yeah um, I forgot who I was talking to. We get yeah. a couple pictures for it. I'll talk about that. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll get there in one second here. Let me close these out. You can look at Grace Green and Brian can talk to you about his drawing for a second while I finish finding these other ones. No pressure, Brian. I'm drawing a cow in a <laughs> castle. I'm doing oh, it very well. Uh, Evan redeemed a baby Diet Coke break. Oh, And oh, he would yeah. like the topic to be the heat in the desert. So mm. we need to talk about the heat. So first of all, I'll start this. When I started my stream earlier today, it was 118.5, which is insane. And the air conditioning can barely keep up where like it struggles to get it to like 80 in here or you know let alone any cooler so yes the heat in the desert sucks and when we're in the middle east um we we meet up with some italian archaeologists over there and they're wimps every one of them and so we would go into the rubahali into the desert and we had to wait in the shade of a building for the sun to go down enough before we could really go in the desert and it's like 140 and uh, not 140 it's like 125 Fahrenheit probably so mm-hmm. it's it's pretty pretty damn hot and um, they're like really do you want to do this and we're like yeah we're here we're like we're, we drove four hours to the sand dunes yes we're gonna do this we're not gonna turn around and go home Tomcat said I swear I saw two suns today and some banthas that's how hot it was yeah no <laughs> doubt so anyway Christy what's your take on the current climate here in Arizona oh I'm fine I'm happy no problems. I played tennis last night. It was 108 when I walked onto the court. Yeah, now when Christy plays tennis, she does use the heat to her advantage. She yeah, just, all these people are melting like flies. I'm like, let's play again. Yeah, she just plays until they pass out. <laughs> yeah, we... Um, uh, Vince said, let them spend a month excavating through Phoenix Summer. They'll be able to handle anything. Yeah, let's talk about our students, Bex. 
the ones from Arkansas that are coming in the next winter. Week. Shh. Next week. Apparently next week we're going to talk about that, but we have students from Arkansas that we go in the winter, and so they're going from blizzard to, you know, 100 degrees and sunny, and it doesn't do well for them. <laughs> <laughs> Bex, oh my god, yes! <laughs> um, Chow Time says, 125, oh my god, you wouldn't sweat because it just evaporated. Well, I've, I've been at Death Valley at over 130. And I'm per- and I, when I said 140, that was wrong. But I know that one time that we were in the Ruba Holly, it was in the 125 to 135 range. And it was yeah. probably the hottest. It was hotter than Death Valley and it was the hottest I've ever been in my life. The hottest we, I've ever been in Oman and is we little, 132. We literally... We're just sheltered in the shade of an old abandoned stone building waiting for the sun to go down. Yeah. The hottest I've ever been in Oman was 132 in the desert. Oh, um, Evan. Oh, uh, McShawn says, I want to go on a dig. Beck says, oh my God, yeah. Monique says, I'm heat intolerant. I would die. <laughs> um, and Evan is redeeming a Christy Tells a Childhood Story. So this will be number two for the night. Now, we already heard about your pet squirrel. Oh, let's see. What should we talk about so now? The next one. Is this going to involve your father? Is this going to involve your stepdad? There's so many choices. Is this one going to involve something about horses and the river? I mean, there could be so. There's so many choices. We could talk about horses. Um, Bex was not there the year we rode horses in Oman, but I am a horse fanatic. When my parents got um, divorced, they both got remarried to different people, obviously, and um, my dad married into a, a big farm family. And um, they had. Um, she says farm, but she, what she means is ranch. Yeah, there was. There we had ranchers. we had hundreds and hundreds of head of cattle. We, they, and um, so we had horses. And so uh, in my typical, this is how my typical childhood goes, which explains a lot. Those of you that know me here in just a second, but um, so we got this horse. Uh, we um, my, we used to call him Papa. My grandfather, my step grandfather, um, got these two horses, and they were named Wine and Whiskey. And he bought them cheap because they had been abused. That that was the suspicion. And so we had wine and whiskey. And then we had this fat little horse named JJ. It was a fat little fuck. It was terrible and he farted all the time and he was horrible. But um, so we put my youngest stepsister, April. Oh, I shouldn't say brother names. They won't like that. But my, like you don't know. My youngest stepsister was on the little fat horse. And um, my older stepsister was on uh, whiskey. And so I was on wine. And we were riding through and we would we would ride all the time and so we were riding around in the pastures and stuff and we come up through the front pasture and um there's a pond in the front and there's some guys fishing down there and so we're um we're probably trotting we came so you know we're fast but we're not going too fast and we kind of slow a little bit to wave to the people fishing and somebody pulls back the fishing line to cast and it makes a snap sound and wine freaked the flip out and she bucked like you see on the movies the whole bunky bronco rodeo thing she did that and i went completely off the back bounced around a couple times and she took off and um i wasn't really hurt you know i was more stunned i got the wind knocked out of me and everything else i was probably maybe 13 maybe maybe not even 13 and um my dad looks at me he happened to be one of the fishers and my dad looks at me and he's like what are you doing stop looking at me get up go catch the horse get back on take the damn horse to the barn. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> so my childhood was suck it up, solve the problem. So after I got thrown off a horse, I immediately had to go catch the horse, get back on the horse, take it and then brush it down. And somehow it was my fault that I got thrown because I wasn't a good enough rider. <laughs> so another crazy story from Chrissy's childhood. Um, Beck says, I'm very sad that I missed horse the horse riding year in Oman. Yeah. Um, Monique says- well, Hydrate, wait, I saw a hydrate. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there is a Christy Hydrate. Good job. Thanks, Evan. Uh, Monique says, uh, must be a happy horse story. Yeah, he should when he said sad, she said earlier. Uh, Tomcat says, we had wine and whiskey. Is this about tonight? <laughs> Tracy <laughs> says, foreshadowing. Uh, Evan says, this reminds me of class. <laughs> yeah. Retro Shinobi says, rub some dirt on it. Ain't that the truth? That's My father says exactly that all the time. Exactly what Christy's dad would have told her. Um, and Showtime says, Christy, I challenge you to play tennis in Florida in Done August. It. Many times, actually. Uh, typically, uh, right now, I'm in Orlando playing in a tournament. I typically play in um, a tournament in August in Florida, in September in Florida, and in October in Florida. And, and yeah, then also in January. The, um, the USTA campus yeah, yeah, is in Orlando. Is in Orlando. In Lake Nona. Lake Nona. So we're usually there this time. Oh, hey, Randy and Chow. 
There is a great Turkish... No, outdoors, not indoors. There is a great Turkish restaurant in Lake Nona <gasps> called Bosphorus. Oh my God, it's so good. If you guys like Turkish food, you have to go. It's, Even if you don't like Turkish food, go. And now they have the Rocky, which is the like the Turkish version of like a Perno. R-O-K-I. Yeah, Rocky. R-O-K. Um, but they have the, the, the Turkish alcohol. It's not necessarily good, but you know, do a flight just to do it because it's crazy. Yeah, and if you were here last week, we talked about kanafa, the oh. cheesy filo dough dessert thing. They have kanafa That's right. at Bosphorus. So. All right, Chow says he's dragging Randy. <laughs> it is so good. Oh, Evan Redeemed Hydrate. Thank you, Evan. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Cheers to you. Oh yeah, we got mm. all distracted. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about uh, celebration. Right, so we got back to London. We flew to London in no, a car. No, we, we, yeah, we flew in a car. <laughs> Turned in the rental car, had the most expensive cab ride of my entire life. Oh my freaking God. I don't know what was wrong with that man. I could have walked through London faster than that guy. And lots cheaper. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, oh, tell the hotel story. So last week, we told the story <laughs> where we got to Cairo and we had There'll paid. There'll be no need for dragging. I like that, Randy. We had paid for whatever it was, a Hilton or a Hyatt or something. And when we checked in in Cairo, they said, oh, so sorry, the hotel has just been sold. We're no longer a Hilton or a Hyatt. It was Four Seasons. But we have a room for you. When we went to London, we had booked the oh. Four Seasons Canary Wharf. This is Four Seasons. And we go and we check in and they say, oh, sorry, we're no longer the Four Seasons. Yesterday. We got, we like literally changed yesterday. We're just now some generic bullshit hotel. And our restaurant's closed, our bar's closed. Bar yada, yada, yada. is closed. Yeah. So um, Evan redeemed a Christy Hydrate. Oh, thanks. So that was our welcome to London this time. And we're at Canary Wharf um, for Star Wars Celebration. Now, as... Is this story long? Can I have time to get some wine? You can get some wine. Okay, nobody go anywhere. I'll be back. As Retro... No, I'm good. As Retro Shinobi might have hinted to, um, Star Wars Celebration London did... Oh, shit. Sorry, baby. You okay? Yeah. She says I'm the one that's drunk. (laughs) Um, So... Star Wars Celebration London maybe didn't work out as planned because we arrived one week after the whole Brexit thing got started. So basically, we show up as artists with our wares that we do not set the prices on, right? The prices are set by Lucasfilm and and by the galleries and by others. And we have to pay for all these booths and all the expense of flying there and printing our artwork and all this stuff. And we show up a week after Brexit started to a place where their currency is now worth 30% less and they're all pissed off. So I show up with my 250 Kylo Ren art prints that are Star Wars Celebration exclusives. If this had been in America, they would have all sold out the first or second day. But what I basically have is a bunch of like British and European people being like... They're upset. So mad. They're like... This, it's outrageous. George Lucas should be turning over his grave. I'm like, he's not dead. They're like, well, he should be. You know, they're just so mad. And they're just yelling and screaming and upset at everything. And some of them are very nice, but a lot of them were just angry. So while it was a fun Star Wars celebration, it was not a lucrative Star Wars celebration. And that giant suitcase that we had packed full of art, we now had to pay to send back home because it was still full of art. So it was it was very crazy. Oh. Um yeah. Retro is, is definitely commenting on everything. He's like, lol, hi. Los Dudas says, oh, man. Oh, he says, I hope she's okay when Christy ran into the desk. Yeah, whoops. Uh, McShawn said, the cat was more disturbed by Christy leaving the room. <laughs> yeah, only because I bothered her. Not because she likes me. Uh, Retro says, they're so frugal. Evan cheered four bits. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Tomcat says, maybe they just preferred the original trilogy. Uh, Les Dude says, you look so different now, Brian. Yeah, it's it's the COVID-19 times two. <laughs> no, he keeps shaving. I keep telling him he needs the scruffy beard look, but he keeps well, shaving. It. And try- he cut his hair, too. I am trying to shave, like, once a week during COVID just so I don't turn into, like, a werewolf or something. But, but he also decided to cut his hair. I like his little fluffy curls. Well, but... you guys saw my COVID hair when I had, That's had it cut. That's not what I meant. So, Tomcat says, who are you calling scruffy looking? <laughs> Retro says, go full-blown mountain man. Let's not encourage him, people. You all don't have to live with him. I do. But yeah, so, so Celebration, it was a good time. I mean, I had fun. I volunteered in the family room like I always oh, do. Oh, wait, wait. I'm not to that picture yet. Oh, sorry. 
Christy can narrate. She's got. The, she's in charge of. The One photos. is Hi Fi Brian Miller. The other is Octopolis Brian Miller. That is good. That's funny. That's true. It may be true. But mom. So oh, it still hasn't changed yet. There's our booth. I can see it. You have a there it is. Booth yeah. Um, so it's mine and Joe's booth. So uh, Brian usually splits a booth with Joe Caroni. And so this is their booth. And I usually don't go to Star Wars Celebration. But I, Christy heard London and she's like, I'm yeah, in. I'm in. I love London. Um, Star Wars Celebration is, I mean, I like it just fine, but it's usually the time of the year that I can't uh, go because I'm teaching. And, and to be else. honest, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I just stand around and have to work. And so I'm like, y'all can do that. Have fun. Bye bye. Um, uh, this one says, oh, somebody cheered 20 bits. Oh, thank you so much. And thank then, you, Chow Time. You take Sean on a dig. I'll go live with him for a bit. <laughs> that seems like a good trade. Okay, no problem. Mave Mushkala, as we would say. Um, Retro says, fantastic place to visit. Evan says, Brian, what do you do on the digs? Well, Evan, it's funny that you should ask. Next week. We're going to talk about that next week. And actually, Brian does work on the digs these days. Early on, he uh, didn't have as many responsibilities. But now that we have found his skill set, Brian's in charge of a lot of shit on the digs now. Because <laughs> we uh, delegate to him. That's right. We will definitely go in depth on my role in the digs next week. Whether you want to know or not. So the kids room, Brian said he volunteers at the um, kids room at Star Wars Celebration. He usually does this every year, they ask him. And um, actually at this one, he made, uh, uh, okay, so we know that I'm an educator and I do all this stuff all the time, but Brian completely on his own says, I have this idea, how do you think this would work? And what he did is he had the kids color and then cut out the top of BB-8 and the bottom of BB-8 and then they could use, um, did you have them do push pins or paper clips? I can't remember. It was one of those little, you push Brads. it in and it, it, yeah. yeah, it's a brad, it like splits apart. Yeah, yeah. and so then they, it could move. And so it was it super spin. cute. Yeah. It was a super cute idea. He thought of it all by his little self. I was so proud. Uh-oh, hydrate. Thank you, chow time. Uh, Vince says he must get in on one of those digs too. And Brian has the skills to pay the bills. Well, let's not get crazy. But <laughs> Pre-COVID, yes. <laughs> During COVID, maybe not so much. Mm. Mm. Christy hydrating. Don't you worry. Thank you very much. I um, about knocked the whole studio over when I went to get more to hydrate on. Anyway, so Celebration was cool. Um, the good thing about and Celebration... Canary Wharf was great. Except that, for that it, it was closing yeah. all the damn time. We could never get any food or drink because we would get out of Celebration. Late. And they'd be like, oh, all the restaurants on Canary Wharf are closed. We're like, WTF. And of course, there's no bar restaurant in our no longer a Four Seasons hotel. Right. So it was a challenge. Yeah. I and mean, we, we found like two places and we ended up be going there. We found a Chinese place. What was it? Italian was the other one. And we ate them every night that we were there because there's only two things open by the time we got out off the shore fl show floor. That's another thing that people don't think about about cons. Everybody's like, it's so much fun. It's such a great thing. You go and you dress up. And Tracy is like, please go buy me this. Please go buy me that. And I'm like, hey, hey. But um, if you work it, you know, you're there. You're at your booth eight ten hours a day have to be nice to people which is why i don't go and then you know you got to pack up every night and then you have to be there early in the morning and god it's a crap ton of work that nobody ever thinks about but um let's see uh-oh uh hydrate uh, uh old people who are you calling old people cheers thank you um and thank you, my friend. You're welcome, Tracy. I have slept home a lot of shit from you from cons, but uh, it's been fun because I usually buy the same stuff that you do. But um, Retro says, Brian, I wish we knew each other then because I could have just asked my friend's dad for the key to his what? pub in London uh, or his Hello? people in London. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Where were you then? Yeah, Retro Shinobi. <laughs> Where were you then? <laughs> Funny. Um, what was I talking about? I was going to say something else about uh, Celebration. Oh, the other thing about Celebration is um, it's cool because you get to see, obviously, all the cosplay and all that stuff. And then you get to see the panels and all of that. Um, so and all the angry British and European people. Well, that's a different... This year was special. <laughs> somebody brought us... Um, somebody oh. brought us Stroop Waffles. Stroop Waffles. Oh, yes. First time I ever had Stroop Waffles. Now they're everywhere. But I had never had but them. she brought them then. from... Belgium. Belgium, yeah. Oh, my God, they were good. I kept saying... And she brought them, actually, to Joe. She was a friend of, or a fan of Joe. And I kept saying... Tule is her name. And I kept saying, Hi, I'm, I'm Joe's friend. Bring more. Hi, bring more. Hi. 
If you guys have never been to a Star Wars celebration, the Belgian contingent of the 501st... is huge. They build those giant spaceships and stuff, like the giant uh, AT-AT, the giant TIE Fighter. Like, anytime you see a giant ship... They usually are the ones that built it. And when you see an American celebration and there's a giant TIE fighter, they built it. They built it, they shipped it here, and then they put it back together here. So Brian has a couple of fans that of, from Belgium that come to every celebration. And I mean, it's amazing. Uh, but Sean's like, it's pronounced stroke waffle, dumbasses. <laughs> uh, um, Evan says, is this a commission? No, I'm doing uh, a different illustration for every one of these Thursday, it's for me. Thursday night. Treasures shows. Uh, Monique says, have you ever been to Japan? Well, They're Joe Caroni and I were supposed to go to Japan for celebration, um, but Caroni got a medical ailment and had to be rushed to the emergency room. And so he said, well, I can't go. And since he and I share a booth and he... he we in were, all expenses. And we're partners, I was like... Well, Joe's not going. It would be wrong for me to go. That would be that would, I'd be being rude to my partner. But Joe has also been doing Star Wars a lot longer than me. So Lucasfilm's like, oh, Joe, that's so sorry. We'll, we'll invite you back next time. And to me, they're like, you're blacklisted. You screwed us over, Miller. So it was like five more years before they invited me back again after that. It wasn't that long. He's being dramatic. But I'm just saying that I was trying to do the right thing, and I got the shaft. Um, how are the lines compared to U.S. celebration? Well, it wasn't a fair comparison because of Brexit. Um, yeah. So everybody was uh, more worried and mad at the situation. And so they were a little bit uh, not as excited at Celebration. They were mostly looking at things instead of It's a things. smaller show. It's definitely more... It's definitely smaller. It's more focused on the enjoyment aspect and the ex access. So like... It's not necessarily as much about the sales and about the transactions and about the standing in line as it is more about the interacting with the fans. So it's it's a different it's a different mentality. Um, the uh, print, the Kylo print that I showed earlier, by the way, is um, still available. I just posted up Brian'sOctopolis.com link. That's right. Um, also, the travel posters that Brian does is up there too. There's uh, Egypt and a couple other things up there as well. If you're if you haven't been there before. Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, Sean, Strope Waffle. Whatever. It is tasty, whatever the hell it is. And have you, did you, have you tried the liquor? The Strope Waffle liquor? Holy crap. Brian buys me that and we drink it in morning tennis matches because I'm pretty sure it's breakfast. Um, I think Strope Waffle is breakfast food. Yeah. yeah. Japan was so into Star Wars. Yeah, uh, Bex used to uh, Rebecca Bex used to live in Japan. She taught That's there, right. and so yeah, she was been there for a while. Okay, Chow Time redeemed a posture check. Thank uh -oh. you so much, Chow Time and Farley redeemed a hydrate and a Christy hydrate. Mm, yes. So cheers to you, Farley. Um, Retro Shinobi says also just to point out, I type about Japan, and my phone reminds me of how cheap flights are right now. I know at cheap flights for everywhere. I keep thinking, where are we going to go? And then I think I don't want to quarantine for fourteen days once I get there. Because yeah. nobody wants an American there now. Uh, Beck says, I love the travel posters. I have quite a few. Yes, you do. We thank you for that, Yes, Bex. thank you, Bex. Um, I'll be hitting you up for the solo, if you know what I mean, says Retro Shinobi. <laughs> um, you should get a fresh one. Hey, don't tease, Sean. If you want to go on a dig, maybe one should have to provide a fresh stroke waffle. I'm just saying. It's just a thought, putting it out there. <laughs> um... Monique said, I love Japan. I was sad to see Shuri Castle, oh yes, burn, um, having visited there. I was fortunate with Notre Dame. Notre Dame was burning when I landed in Frankfurt um, a week before I was going to Paris. Yeah, we actually were talking. Are we, gonna, are we, are we telling them that or not? Um, yeah, um, but before that, I was just going to say, we were at Star Wars Celebration Chicago when when they talked about Notre Dame burning and I was I was devastated so like the day I came home I created that illustration yeah so there's art there for that too and all the profit well uh, I think it was half the profits went to uh, the fund the restore Notre Dame fund and uh, Brian and I are going to talk about France in two weeks um, and we'll talk about Notre Dame of course during that time as well um, let's see make her do it okay um, mm, waffles yeah um, I'm showing up for waffles every time. Thank you, Tracy. We can count on you. I appreciate that. Um, come to NL with us. Okay. Tracy, you must come to... Okay. I got nothing else to do. 
Um, yes, it was crazy. Uh, that's some expensive waffles. <laughs> it might be, but hey, it's worth it. You want her to be late Lord or Lady Sean, right? Um, save your pennies. That's cheese and wine night then. Oh yes, France would be cheese and wine night. That's an excellent idea. Oh yeah, Good for sure. Good job. For sure. And to hydrate on the wine thought, Brian. Oh, okay. You got any of that Lagavulin left? Or are you I, giggling I yet? got just a little bit left. Thank you so much, Chow Time. Yeah, that's a good idea. The um, wine and cheese, and I'll try to remember that. Um, the other thing, if you haven't been to Celebration, they do these fun things too, um, where you can, uh, they set up these photo areas. The other thing about London too, I totally forgot, we should have brought one out, is that they did live screen printing. It's one of the first places I saw do um, t-shirt printing. Now the irony is that was an American company. Yeah. I found out later. I talked to them at Epcot. Well, I knew that because they were all speaking American English instead of British English. But, um, uh oh, posture check and more hydrates. Oh, okay. Thank you for the posture, posture for check. You, for me. Um, I'm gonna let you guys pick. Uh, so I've got Balvenie, Avalor, Lagavulin. <laughs> you you guys pick one, and that'll be my next my next one. They're waiting. <laughs> Retro yeah. says the Balvaney. Mm -hmm. I figured that would be the. Oh, Monique says the third one. The one you haven't tried. I've had, had them all. all. I've had them all. Good all luck right. finding one he hasn't tried. Uh, Tracy says that's a good cow. I love the cow, Brian. Oh, thank you. He is cute. I have to say that. I'm gonna put this in my office later, Tracy. If we ever get to go back to our offices. All right. I'm going to go with the Balvaney 14 year old. It's almost empty, guys. I don't know if you can see. Like, For Brian's birthday every year, I buy him oh, a bottle of Balvaney. Down, down to the last wee drams. I should, can I, can I pop that near the mic? Can you hear this? Randy and I pair our drink nights based on the theme of the show. That's very smart. Oh, wait, I should do this. I should do this close to the microphone. Dude, finish it. Hey, don't encourage him. <laughs> Tomcat says, ooh, good audio. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on one of those channels, what do you call those things? The ASMR. Yes. Can, should we do an ASMR liquor scotch. channel? Be like, yeah, does rum sound different than scotch going into the glass? Oh, God. <laughs> Stop drinking, dude. All right, Evan redeemed a Christy Hydrate. Oh, thanks. And a Brian Hydrate. I appreciate so, you, Evan. Cheers to you guys. I'm usually have a limit of three this will be number four so great it's like i'm right there <laughs> <laughs> thx funny the cat is clinging onto the chair whenever you swing around yeah she head. digs her claws in she loves being on the back of my chair she usually doesn't do it when we stream though so this is only the second time she's I, ever it's probably because we're both in here ever been here when we streamed she only likes me at night she loves brian she's very much daddy's girl she does anything brian says she does not really like me that much at all unless dude is like that's impressive <laughs> or holding on to the chair. Yep. That's so funny. She got skills. But yeah, if you haven't been to a Star Wars Celebration, first of all, they're super duper fun. Oh, we were talking about the screen printing thing. Um, anyway, you see that all the time now. Now that I've been to other cons and stuff, you see that. But this was whatever it was, three years ago, four years ago at in, in, in London. And they were, you would go through this line and pick your t-shirt. And then they had all the choices up on the wall of what you could do. And then you, by the time you got in it was your turn. You should tell them what number. And so you got the color you wanted and the num and the print that you wanted. And then they would do them. And you got to watch them flip the screens and do it and stuff. And it was like this eight or nine armed thing. And they would just take turns of whichever design they were doing. And they'd run them through one of those little heat uh, machine things. And then it'd be done in like 10 minutes. And it was the coolest thing. I was really impressed. I bought like three of them for us. Yeah, um, and they're in their in their good shirts, and like I said, it's the same company. And it lasts. I was surprised. The same company that's doing it at Epcot Festival of the Arts now, and they do a really nice job. Really nice job. Uh, Retro says Nolly literally sits on my lap when I'm working on a piece. Um, she'll sit on my keyboard sometimes. I think, but it's just to be a bitch, not because she likes me. <laughs> um, there is an Ellie figure right there. Yeah, don't you like that, Brian the Jedi? <laughs> um, that's right, limited edition, baby. <laughs> An Octopolis, Tiki Octo. Oh, did you go to Tiki Tuesday? Was Tomcat on Tiki Tuesday? Oh, Tomcat, were you at Tiki Tuesday this week? So we designed, or we did the Do initial you have it in here? the initial sketch, yeah, let me grab it, of our Octo Tiki mug. Um, and people are going crazy about it. Now, it's just a sketch. Yeah. We haven't we haven't taken it to the next level oh, yet. Oh, yes, he said he was there. But 
All right, but I'll show it in case people weren't. But so this was our our initial idea for like an Octopolis tiki mug with the octopus grabbing the treasure chest and trying to pull it open. So how cute is that? Uh, we'll be I'll be do a couple revisions of the drawing and then I'll be working with Chow Time probably and we Muppet will babies. we will uh, take this to Just the next how level. much you pay attention. <laughs> I wasn't there. Um, okay. Approved. Hey, let's do this. Would you be able to find us the Muppet Babies theme song on YouTube with lyrics? I know that's normally uh, Quinch Press's job, but if you could do that, I'd be eternally grateful. And we'll redeem Evan's theme song as soon as we see that link. Um, we won't. Brian will. Oh, Christy could sing. I do not sing, and I do not know, know Muppet Babies. All right. Uh... Mick Sean says, Lord Sean was there too. <laughs> Just together on his Thank account. you, Les Dudas. Oh, Les has already found it. Oh, wow. That's wow, fast. Wow, that was fast. Okay. Let me move some paints out of the way so we can sing. Again, there's no we here. <laughs> there's no we in the we? There's no we. This is All the right. royal we. The, mouse, there, the there cat will, on your chair. There will probably be a commercial. Oh, no, there's not going to be. All right. You guys, let me know how the audio is. It's babies. I got to remember this one. Muppet Babies will do the same for you. Kind of weird and you wish that you weren't there. Close your eyes and make believe you can be anywhere. Great jokes. Animal dance. Let the computer. I play the piano. I have blue hair. Me invent things. Me, 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 me. Is everything all right in here? Yes, Nanny. Bit babies, we make our dreams come true. Muppet babies, we'll do the same for you. Muppet babies, Muppet babies. Oh, we did it, guys. Muppet babies. Awesome. You had a hydrate in there too, by the way. Oh, there's a hydrate too? We'll get to that. Mm -hmm. All right, we did it. Muppet Babies. Don't read the chat. I might have made snarky comments. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like McShawn's like, the cat is unimpressed. Yeah, she almost fell off the chair. It's Sorry. hysterical. She's still there. <laughs> India's still there. Thank you for the hydrate. Yeah. I can't hit those high notes, guys. <laughs> yeah. Really, Evan? Really, Thank you for well the pause. Worth it? <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's well worth it. Mm. Tracy says, hilarity. We have, what was the song we had to do earlier today? It was um, Phineas and Ferb. And it was like, in my key. The key of off. It was awesome. <laughs> That's a solid key. Retro says, oh my ears. Yeah. Mine too. <laughs> oh, there's me with Boba Fett. This guy like whispered in my ear that he was part of like the American, you know, State Department or something. He's like, "Don't tell anybody, but I'm really with the State Department." Or I'm like, sure. I'm like, uh huh. Okay. The people at the Star Wars Celebration tell you a lot of things. Which one of those things are true? Mm, who knows? It's anyone's guess. Um, he's one of the bigger flying Mandalorians now. Speaking of which, sitting on my desk. Not at all related to Scotland, but oh my god, look how cute he is! Just got him a target, in case you're wondering. Do the hand thing. Do the magic hand thing. Do the magic hand thing. He does it. I need a baby Yoda. Or the child. Uh, Retro Shinobi said, he whispered the activation key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm, the child. Whatever. <laughs> it's baby Yoda. Um, mm. Tomkit says, Brian, you're not the only one with a custom Jedi card. Oh. Uh, Beck said, had a great time, got to head out. Also, super gorgeous so far, Brian. See you Tuesday. Oh, good to see you, Bex. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Bye, Bex. Uh, oh, Tomcat is sharing a link with us. Lord Sean. Uh oh. We should click on that. Totally clicking. Hold, please. Oh, oh he's nice. got his custom Star Wars card as Darth Vader. That's awesome. That is cool. That's fantastic. Are you in the the 501st and stuff? You have to let us know. Got to get the Costco. Co There's a Costco version? Gadgets and doodads. Uh, see, now. What? I, I think I might have said the other day we should go to Costco. Oh, shit. 
Look at him. That's more stuff. Up. Look, I have this one too. Don't you worry. The, that's the build bear one. It makes noises. Um, Chow Time says, when will LucasArts have you do Mando art? I did some Mando art, but I don't think it'll ever see the light of day, but maybe for season two. So we'll see about that. And we uh, are hoping season two stuff comes. Yeah, I soon. think season one was such a, sort of, such a sort of surprise that they were kind of caught. Kind of like with all the merchandise, they were like not ready for it. Uh, Bye, Bex. Tomcat, just, he just photoshopped that in of Lord and That's funny. Sometimes it's baby coos. He comes with a shifter knob and a frog. Oh, Brian. I, I saw that online. I did suggest that we should go to Costco, and somebody was like, I don't want to go to Costco. It's too crowded. So, But now I want to go to Costco. Mm, I see. Uh, Retro says, working with some peeps in hair department. Oh. I'm on it already. Mando art plenty. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I'm, you know. We're in the same loop, so I just been focused on some of the celebration stuff so far. Celebration uh, light. Yeah. Like San Diego Comic Con light <laughs> that we're doing. Yeah, everything. But yeah, it was cool. Celebration London was cool. Like if you've done a celebration America, you might like it better than Celebration Europe. Um, but it was cool to get to go and get to do one. And I had heard some other artists tell me that like you should just think of it as a field trip and not a work project and they were right so it was definitely it was definitely we did not see the kind of profits no. on that one that it was, we a, it was a fiscal loss for yes. sure especially but, with the scotland trip just saying yeah but we had a good time we had a good time uh Sean says nah they knew what they were doing and richard says waiting to see what they're going to do this celebration yeah i mean we all are right i mean yeah. you know obviously celebrations canceled but then there's all these rumors about maybe some sort of virtual art show or something so we'll see what happens it's it's all up in the air it's crazy, but it's worth doing, and it's always fun to meet people and connect with, you know, the artists and the costumers and the the stars and everyone else. So it's a good time. It's definitely a good time. I don't know. I think that's our trip to Scotland. Did we do it? I think we got it all. Let me see your 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 thing. Oh, so here's the finished artwork. There you go, Christy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that is the. That'll look good on my wall. <laughs> that is the Scottish coup. And the ruins of uh, Dunnan's Castle. So just a, I mean, I don't know if it was quick, but a little loose sketch from our trip to Scotland. Tomcat said he's never been to one, but maybe they'll happen again. Yeah, Hopefully, so inshallah. 2022, I think, is what we're looking at. Uh-oh, Evan's got a new LaCroix coconut and mango. Both not bad. We've tried the coconut, but not mango. Uh, yes, I don't like mango. Yeah, coconut might be fun. Um... I don't know about their nose being black. Maybe it's gray or something. I don't, I'm not sure. I uh, I was drawn well, this we can we pictures. can verify. Hold, please. That's right. Christy has the Scottish coup pics. I have all of them. And uh, I do I trust Monique because she's definitely kept me on the straight and narrow before. Oh, thanks for the thanks for the cheers, uh, Tom. See Cat. you 2022, no sure. doubt. Hold on, he's coming in. He's resin in any second now. He'll be there. You'll see the little cow. It's hard to tell. It could be dark brown. It could be gray. It's kind of a... I think it might change. I think it might depend on the little cow. <laughs> Richard's like, the Google, Brian. Don't act like you're old. <laughs> oh, Chow Time redeemed to hydrate. Excellent. Cheers That's... to you, Chow Time. Mm. Mm. And Tomcat says, I'll try and bring my Lady Lord Sean. <laughs> Too funny. McShawn says the baby Highland cows are adorable. Yeah, they're all oh adorable. Oh, my God. They're all adorable. Did you have the picture of you next to the fence with the cows? Yeah, I showed oh that one gosh. already. Yeah, it was so cute. Well, I was probably drawing, so I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't catch it. What do you mean? You weren't paying attention to me? I was paying attention to the artwork. Huh. Hold on. It's gummy. The background's looking very nice. Oh, thank you, Tillelock. Haven't seen Holtec, you. Holtec, the learning god. Haven't seen you tonight. Good to see you here again. Uh, Evan says, what a fun night. <laughs> like a hairy longhorn, true enough, but with bangs. Oh, okay. Monique is demanding the nose color change. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> that was good, Monique. That was well played. I mean, I think, demanding. I think. Well, she actually used a command in the chat. So yeah, that's that's serious. That's serious. I think we have to respond to that. Needs more brown, more gray brown. More gray. Okay, we'll do that. It'll make him pop. She knows. I'm. I'm telling you, like, anytime that Renee. 
And Monique Renee has given me notes on art. She's always been right. Maybe she should be the one. I usually give him notes on art. Usually I get the, do you like A or do you like B? Do you like A or B? And I can't tell the difference between A and B, so I just randomly pick one. Don't tell Brian I said that. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Borm>? <laughs> So, um, so let's talk about next week real quick. Oh, first of all, did you, you two share... You are vampires and age backwards? Yeah, no. I don't did, think that's Did true. you share all the different links you wanted to share, first of all? Um, I think so. I think I've got them all in there. All right, so let's talk about next A week. Jill of all trades. Master of none. I like that. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. I do have one more uh, fun little link for you, if you care. Uh, no, Quinch Press isn't here tonight. He ha- he can't do no, it Thursdays. Quinch, uh, normally he has his bass guitar lessons on Thursdays, but tonight he is uh, watching a concert, uh, like a virtual concert. So he's a big, if you guys don't know, like he normally goes to over 100 live music shows every year. Plus he runs the um, uh, the Instagram for all the cocktail bars and stuff. So um, He's busy. He's busy, but it's really tough for him during COVID when he can't go out and do all that stuff. So I just shared um, this one I forgot to tell you. There's a book uh, called Where's My Plaid? A Scottish Roots Odyssey. And it's about a dude, um, an American, that uh, he and his wife get this wild hair to go to Scotland. And he finds out that Cameron is a, his last name is Scottish. Hello, how do you not know that Cameron's not Scottish? But apparently he did not know. And so then he goes on this whole quest of tracing his ancestry and his roots. And his wife is like, I thought we were just going to go to Scotland. And so it becomes a fun, it's like, it's fact and fiction, but it's mostly his adventures. And I'd forgotten I had bought it a couple of years ago, uh, probably right before this trip. And I hadn't, I never finished it. And I found it again the other day when we were talking about doing Scotland. And it's really cute. It's well written. This is like, the I don't know if it's the only thing he's ever written or one of the few, first things he ever wrote. But it's really cute. And it's a travel kind of log about... Um, his quest to find his roots and how it kind of became a fan. Um, he became fanatic about it and then the fun little journey they have. So it's a super cute book if you are so interested and so inclined. You know, have some free time during COVID. You could read it. Um, Les Dudas says, wow, he must be having concert withdrawal like we're having comic draw. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, seriously, like a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, I'll just get a call from Quench Press and he's like, I just got four tickets to this show. Do you want to go right now? And yeah. you know, Or then the next day he'll be like, I'm in L.A. for a show, or I'm in some other... Germany or something. Yeah, 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 literally. like He'll be in L.A. one night, London or Germany the next, and then back in Phoenix. So he is all about the music. Um, Monique says, I'll be watching the Monsters of Rock Cruises virtual concert tomorrow. Just Ooh, that's FYI. fun. Um, there, I like the nose a lot more. Thank you, Monique. Thank you. Thanks for... <laughs> you, you. It's better now. You keep me on the straight and narrow. I appreciate it. Um... <laughs> McShawn says, I don't have any free time. I heard earlier that I have additional assignment for you, you do. It's coming soon. We'll keep you posted. Les Tudis says, wow. Evan says, Dr. Miller, do you do anything with dinosaurs? Don't even start. You just crossed a line. Don't Mr. even start. Mm-mm. Tracy says, blasphemy. <laughs> yeah. No dinosaurs. Dead. We, we deal with people. No matter what the movies say. That's right. No matter how hot little, what's his name is. What's his name? Chris Pratt. No people in dinosaurs. We don't do dinosaurs. Right. Yeah, anthropologist, anthropology is a study. Banished. Sean said banished. People and cultures. Yeah. Uh, dinosaurs are dead to me and the rest of the world. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> For only like, you know, 60 million years, give or take. So funny. Okay, we got the nose fixed. We felt better about the nose now. So should we give a sneak peek for next week? Sure. Okay, so next week we're going to talk about our adventures in Oman. Now, Oman is a country in the Middle East where Christy has a dig, and we went there for years and years and years and years. Okay, that might be an exaggeration. It's not an exaggeration. <laughs> um, so next year will just be like the tip of the iceberg about Oman, but if you're interested in camels and sand dunes and all things Middle East, we'll be talking about that next week for sure, and it's going to be a great time. Dang, I thought I had a picture of Bex right here. I was going to show a picture of Bex, and Ooh. I couldn't find it. She already went anyway. Team Christmas leave. Unicorn. <laughs> um, so yeah, that'll be next week for sure. Should we run the credits, or do you have? I, I have one little photo to oh, entice okay. you for next Tom week. Tomcat says camel spiders. Eek! Oh yeah, camel spiders are yucky. Monique says I would love to do a dig with Dr. Christie, but she wouldn't love listening to me whine about the heat and sand <laughs> for hours. Yeah, no. Chow time says so. What am I drinking? You know, I think we should just probably do wine next week. Don't you think? 
I think so. Um, well, I'll probably so, do wine no matter what. Here's our thing about the Middle East. We said this before, which is like we went to Egypt. You don't want anything that doesn't come out of a can or a bottle.